appropriate to the mosaic. So tonight's topic, Defiled by Women, part two. Okay, so we're just going to do a recap a little bit. Um, give me the book. Give me the book of Revelation 14, verse 4. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Because we touched on um, being defiled by women. So those that are not defiled by women, they're going to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Read that. Revelation 14 and verse 4. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. Read. These are they which were not defiled with women, for, mm -hmm. they, were, for they are virgins. For they are virgins, meaning they are pure. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are pure, for they are virgins, meaning they are pure. Go ahead. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So now it says, these were redeemed from among men. This is the 144. The 144,000 will not be defiled with women. You understand? They will not be defiled with the philosophies that women bring primarily, okay? The lamb is talking about the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Get that in John 129. Who's the lamb? These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Okay, read that. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Read Today John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold mm -hmm. the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see that? Beware. He says, When John, you and his son John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's talk about Christ, the black Messiah. So the 144,000 will not be defiled with women. They will follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Whatever Christ says to do, we're going to do it, no excuses whatsoever, okay? But when we look at our forefather Adam, he got defiled by our foremother Eve by listening to the philosophies that came with her, that she learned from the serpent. Get that in Genesis 3 verse 6. Let's read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Go ahead. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Ray. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see that? So now when Eve learned the philosophy's idolatry, you understand, to bring disorder in the marriage, what was this disorder she brought in the marriage? Her advising Adam now. Her being Adam's counselor at that point, because now the roles are reversed. She, because idolatry brings disorder in the marriage. And that's what she brought. When she learned that idolatry from the serpent, she brought it to our forefather, Adam, and he listened to the woman. You understand? Thereby being defiled by the woman. What did, I, what did Eve do? Now, she was now advising Adam, which is out of order. It's not what the Lord said. Jump down to verse 17. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Mm -hmm. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see that? So it's because he listened to his wife, guess what? The Lord says, because I told you, don't listen to your wife. Your wife is not going to cancel you. I'm going to cancel you. You understand? Because that's what the Lord commanded Adam to do from the jump. You understand? But because of what? Because of idolatry. Him listening to his woman, guess what? The Lord said, listen, read that again, verse 17. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, say, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in he sorrow. Says, he says, thou shalt not eat of it. Meaning, don't learn. Don't learn the philosophies that come with the woman. Don't listen to the woman. Because primarily, they are the ones that bring philosophies. Those philosophies is idolatry, which brings disorder and chaos in the marriage. You understand? So that's what the Lord told Adam. But Adam didn't do it. He didn't follow that command. Now this is where we at. Watch this. Get that in Sarah 25, 24. Sarah 25 is 24. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 24. Read. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. 
Mm -hmm. And through her, we all die. You see that? Through the woman, through our foremother Eve, came the beginning of sin. You understand? And through her, what was the sin? Idolatry. And through her, we all die. What does that mean? Get that in Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. What was the sin? The sin was idolatry. You understand? And through the woman, listening to the serpent, we all die. Why? Because how were things set up from the beginning? We what you got. Wisdom of Solomon 2, 23, come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. For God created man to be immortal. You see that? God created man to be immortal. So now when it says, through the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Because in the beginning, the most High God created man to be immortal, to live forever. But because of idolatry, you understand? Guess what? That immortal life was cut short. Read what you got. Read again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. For God created man to be immortal. Uh-huh and made him to be an image of his own eternity. So we were made in the image of God's own eternity because the most high God does not have a beginning. He don't have an end. Think about that thing. Listen, oh, we lost, listen, we lost a great deal. So now we cannot make the same mistakes, brothers, that we made, what that our forefathers made in the past. We cannot do that. From the time of our forefather Adam and the forefathers that came after him, we cannot repeat the same mistakes, brothers. Because guess what? Through her, we all die. Guess what? It's going to be the second death. We don't want to be part of that. We want to be part of the first resurrection. Understand that. Read that again, verse 23. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil, mm -hmm. death into the world. You see that? Through envy. Through envy, through envy of the devil. Who's envy? Eve's envy. Because our foremother Eve, she envied the devil. You understand? So because she envied the devil, she brought death into the world. Because of envy of the devil. She was willing to, dis to get, she was willing to, to, to let go of immortal life just so she can be equal or above her husband. Even if it killed her. You cannot make this up. She was willing to, listen, by any means necessary, I want the power. I want to be equal or above my husband, even if it kills us. That's what we read in here. Read again verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Read. And they that do hold of his sight do find it. You see that they that do that, they that get a hold of the sight of the devil, they're going to find death. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. That's why the Lord says, don't listen to the woman. Don't make the same mistake that your forefather did in the past. He says, don't make those mistakes. That's why the Apostle Paul keep reminding us over and over what happened in the Garden of Eve. What, what happened in the Garden of Eden with our forefather Adam and our foremother Eve. Get that in First, first Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy 2, because the Apostle Paul addresses the same thing over and over again. First Timothy chapter 2, read verse 11. Watch this. Come on. First book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Because guess what? The Apostle Paul, there was a problem in the church. You understand? There was a problem in the church of Ephesus. Why? The problem that they had in the church of Ephesus was that our sisters, they were what? They were worshipping the great goddess Diana of the Ephesians. And so now as they are now being taught God's laws through their, by the Apostle Paul, they are now coming into the church, but they are still coming with the spirit of what? Worshipping the woman, the woman being worshipped. You understand? So when they come into the church, they brought the same spirit into the church. That's why the Apostle Paul had to tell Timothy, listen, let those women that are coming into the church to repent, let them learn in silence because they are not used to that. They are used to running their black mouth. They are, they are used to being all up in a man's face. You understand? That's what the Apostle Paul is addressing this thing right here. Read again, verse 11. And guess what? The same thing that the Apostle Paul is dealing with here is the same spirit that we're dealing with today. With 50-50, the feminist movement, you understand? The LGBT, that's what we're dealing with this day. Read again, verse 11. First book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. 
Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, with all submission. You understand? Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. You see what he's saying? But I allow not a woman to teach because guess what? The mistake that was made in the garden, we're not going to repeat the same mistake again. That's why it says, but I suffer not a woman to teach. A woman to teach the man, like our foremother Eve did. When she learned the, the philosophies, the devil, the, the philosophies from the devil, and brought those philosophies to the husband. The Apostle Paul says, don't allow that thing to take place because you're going to repeat the same mistake that our forefather Adam did. Go ahead. Nor to usurp authority over the man. You see that part right there? Nor to usurp authority over the man. What is the authority? I'm equal or above you. All that, go back to Jeremiah 31, verse 22. No, you usurp authority over the man. You understand? Women in the pulpit, woman, bishop, and all that. Yes, read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. You see that? A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall usurp authority over the man in these last days. Why? Because the black man will have forgotten who he is. He will be completely at the bottom, lost and confused. But the spirit of the Lord will jump on the black man. The black man will pick up the Bible, put his boots on, and hit the streets. Understand that. Go back to where was that? First Timothy 2. Read verse 12 again. This book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Mm -hmm. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Come on. But to be in silence. You see that? But to learn in silence. You understand? But to learn in silence. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. You see that? Because Adam was created first, and Adam was given wisdom, was given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and power over the whole planet Earth. Then Eve was created from Adam. Okay, go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. That part right there. And Adam was not what? And Adam was not deceived. Our forefather Adam was not deceived. Go ahead. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see that part right there? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the transgression in Genesis 3 was the woman being deceived. That was the sin which now we all die because she was the one that was deceived, not Adam. Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman was deceived. You understand? That's why the serpent went to the, to the woman he, she, he didn't go to Adam. He went to the woman. Why? Because the woman envied her husband. Not only did she envy her husband, but she envied the devil. So in order for her to be equal or above her husband, she said, listen, I don't want to learn from him because if I learn from him, I'm not going to be equal because according to the order, she cannot be equal to the man. That's how the Lord has set this thing up. But she went to the serpent. The serpent convinced her to say, listen, go back to Genesis 3, read verse 5. This is what the serpent deceived the woman with. Read what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Read. For God, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Uh -huh. And ye shall be as gods. Go ahead. Knowing good and evil. That was the deception. It says God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye, meaning both of you, shall be as gods. So now that was the deception. The deception was that, listen, this knowledge I'm going to give you, the two of you, you are going to be gods. It's not just going to be your husband who's a god on earth, but you're going to be a god with your husband together, ruling side by side. That was the, that was the deception. And the same deception that our foremother Eve fell for back then, the same deception that the black woman has fallen for today, from the mouth of the white man. That is exactly what has happened. You understand? Our sisters have fallen for that deception. Now they're independent. They are single. They've got multiple babies and all that with different baby fathers. Why? Because she was deceived thinking you need, you need to be free from your man. You, your man ain't ish. You understand? Men are dogs. Talk about the black man. You can be equal or above him. Here's a paycheck. Here's a... Here, here's, um, Here's um, Sasa. You don't need him. We, the government will take care of you. You can be equal to him. You can make your own money. You understand? That's why today you hear sisters be saying, you see, if I get my own money, I'm not going to ask you for nothing. 
That's the devil talking. Why? Because that's the same demonic spirit that was happening back then with Eve. Because Eve, when she got the knowledge, she was like, I don't need you, nigga. I'm not going to listen to you. I got, I got wisdom now. I can tell you what to do also. You don't want to tell me what to do. That's the same spirit today. You understand? Because being the head of the house has nothing to do with your pocket. Mm -mm. It's got everything to do with God's laws. The hierarchy and the order that the Lord has set from the very beginning. But today, you hear sisters be saying, if I get my own money, I don't get to ask you nothing. No, 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 no. What is she letting you know? That's, she's, this, she's letting you know she's not loyal. Her God is money. Money is her God. That's what she's telling you. I need you men to understand this thing. Now, give me, go back to, um, go back to 1 Timothy 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Read, more, read that thing again. First book of Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Uh -huh. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see that? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So watch this. Hmm. Now, we, we need to understand this thing. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 2, 7, 7 verse 48. Because what happened, what, 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 what our foremother Eve did to bring death into the world, and by our forefather Adam listening to the woman, guess what? That thing did not only affect him, but he affected the, his, his sons after him, which is us today, the children of Israel. Okay, 2nd Ezra 7. Verse 48, because Ezra, he was complaining about this thing. Watch this. Read it. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 48. Because watch this. Read verse 46. Let's show you the power that our forefather Adam had. Verse 46. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 46. I answered then and said, mm -hmm. this is my first and last say. Go ahead. That it had been better, it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. You see that? It says it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. What is this letting you know? The, the most High God gave the earth to our forefather Adam. Our forefather Adam owned the whole planet earth and everything in it and everyone in it. So now Eve is created after the fact. You understand? If she finds this man a God on earth, you understand that? He rules over every bit of God's creation, and he owns the whole earth. Mm. With all wisdom, all power, all God. Adam was like that. So now this woman is thinking, listen, I want this power too. She was already empowered, but that was not enough. We know why? Because she was greedy. So she was willing to, to get power. How she was willing, she was willing to destroy everything to get access to the same power that her husband had. That's the same thing today. That's why the black woman today, she's so aggressive. You know why? Because it's the same spirit that was in our foremother Eve back then. You understand? That's why you see all these basketball players, all these musicians, all these movie stars and all that. When they, when they date or get married to uh, a woman who's not on the same level, guess what they do? They go to the red tabletop. They go and speak to Jera Pinkett, that whole of Israel. Hmm? Because why? They also want the same attention that the man is getting. That's the same spirit that was in our former mother Eve. That's the same spirit today. You understand? And the white man recognizes that and say, you know what? We're going to create an environment for the black woman to get that just there. Now, the, the main culprit, when we teach the scriptures, who comes against us? Who's the first bulldog for the white man? The black woman, our sisters. That's the fight we are on, brothers. That's the war that we are in. Understand that. Read that thing again, verse 46. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 46. Read. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying. Uh -huh. That it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else, when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. You see what he's saying? Or oh, else, it, when it was given him, you should have restrained him from sinning. You understand? From listening to that woman. Now read verse 48. Go ahead. Verse 48. O oh, thou Adam, what hast thou done? What, is, what did you do? What did you do? Why did you allow yourself to listen to that woman to defile you? Go ahead. 
For though it was thou that sinned. For though it was thou that sinned. What was his sin? His sin was listening to his woman. Go ahead. Thou art not fallen alone. He's not fallen alone. Read. But we all that come of thee. You see that? But we, but we, but we all that come of thee. Get that in Luke chapter 3. You understand? But we all that come of thee. Luke chapter 3, read verse 37. Come on. Of Luke chapter 3, verse 37. Go ahead. Which was the son of Methuselah? Mm -hmm. was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malalil, which was the son of Canaan. Go ahead. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. You see that? So Adam was the son of God. So all those that come out of Adam, the direct descendants of Adam, they are called the sons of God. Get that in Exodus 4, verse 22. Okay? Let's get there. The sons of Adam that got affected by what Adam did when he listened to his woman because he got defiled by the philosophies that came with the woman. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22. Go ahead. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, mm -hmm. even my firstborn. You see that Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Because before the flood, we were called the sons of God. After the flood, after the flood, we are called the, the children of Israel, the sons of Jacob. Okay. Now, watch this. So, because it is important for us to learn from the mistakes our forefathers made, so we don't repeat the same mistakes, and to learn from those forefathers that made the right decisions. Watch this. Give me that in Romans 15, verse 4. Let's get there. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For the things that were written are for time. Were written for us to learn, so we don't repeat the same mistakes that they did. Read what you got. The book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written are for time, were mm -hmm. written for our learning. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that? That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach. Give me Ecclesiasticus. Sirach 47, verse 13. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 13. Go ahead. Solomon reigned in the peaceable time. So now this is King Solomon. Solomon, King Solomon, he reigned in a peaceable time when there was no war, you understand? So he was given a chance to do what? To build a temple according to the promise that the Lord made to his, for, to his father, King David. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 13. Read. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time. Uh-huh. And was honored. For God made all quiet round about him. Read. That he might build a house in his name. And prepare his sanctuary forever. You see that? And prepare his sanctuary forever. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. But the point is, King Solomon reigned in a peaceable time. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles 1 verse 7. Let's get some account of that. You understand? Before he was made king of Israel. You understand? Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, mm -hmm. Ask what I shall give thee. What did he say? Ask what I shall give thee. So the Lord appeared to Solomon and says, ask what I shall give thee. What that mean? Ask what I shall give thee. Get that in Matthew 21, 22. Let's understand what he means. Ask what I shall give thee. Okay, Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 22. Go ahead. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. In what? Whatso whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. You shall ask in prayer, in prayer. So the ask is talk about prayer. Okay, come on. Believing, ye shall receive. You see that thing? So let's go back. Second Chronicles 1, verse 7 again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, mm. ask, what shall, was, ask what I shall give thee. 
He says, ask what I shall give thee. The ask is talking about prayer. He says, pray. Pray unto me what, is the, what it is that you're looking for. You understand? Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. You know what? Before we get there, just hold that. Hold that. Um, read verse 7 one more again for me. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, mm -hmm. Ask what I shall give thee. He says, ask what I shall give thee. Ask what I shall give thee. Hold this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Read. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Mm -hmm. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. So now King Solomon is saying, wherefore I prayed. Remember they said, ask what I shall give thee. Here he's saying, wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Because that's what he asked for. For understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came, up, came unto me. Because wisdom is a spirit. Understand that. Wisdom is the spirit of the most High God. All that, go back to 2 Chronicles 1. Read verse 7 again. 2 Book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Ask what I shall give thee. Jump down to verse 9. Come on. Verse 9. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. Pray. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Mm -hmm. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? So now King Solomon is asking and said, listen, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Because why? Give me that in Hosea 1. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10 real quick. Who can judge this thy people that is so great? Let's get that. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Because this is a momentous task. It's not a small job. Understand that. Read what you got. The book of Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Read which cannot be measured nor numbered. You see that thing? Which cannot be measured nor numbered. Go back. Second Chronicles 1, read verse 10 again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Mm -hmm. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? So one thing you need to notice about King Solomon is that he understood the task that was before him. He understood the momentous that was before him to rule over Israel, to be a king over Israel, and to be able to do what? To guide and judge the people of God righteously according to the scriptures. He understood the first, that's why he asked for wisdom and knowledge. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for fame. He asked for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so he may be able to judge his people with just judgment. Understand that. So now as you men coming into this truth, you are being groomed and to be raised up to become judges in Israel. Just judges. We must know wisdom, law, and judgment. We must understand that's the first thing that you ask for when you come into this truth. That is the number. That's your goal. To learn that. To learn that. That's why the milk is so important. That's why it's important to follow command. That's why we have a chain of command. You go against that order, you got to go. Why? Because why? We do, you don't understand what's going on. The momentous stuff that is before us. Okay? Read that again, verse 10. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 1, is 10. Read. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Mm -hmm. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? Read. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, mm -hmm. and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, Neither yet hast thou asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Come on. That thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. You see what he's saying? He says, but you ask wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Why? That thou mayest judge my people over whom 
I have made thee king. So the Lord understood. The Lord saw that in King Solomon's mind. That he asked for that because that was what is in his mind. And the Lord was able to answer his prayer because his prayer was sincere. He didn't. He wasn't faking the funk before the Lord. He kept it a hundred. You understand? And the Lord saw that thing. Read. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor. You see that thing? The Lord, the Lord is saying, listen, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Because that's what you asked for. And the reason why, you didn't just ask for it for, for you to say, oh no, he's a sage. No, he's wise. Mm -mm. He, the Lord gave him the wisdom. Why? Because he asked for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that he can be able to be a righteous judge in Israel to judge the nation of Israel righteously. That's why the Lord gave him the wisdom. He says, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And not only that, I will give thee riches and wealth and honor over and above that. Go ahead. Such as none of the kings have had that have been mm -hmm. before thee. Go ahead. Neither shall there any after thee have the like. You see that thing? No, this is, there's no any other king that's going to be like you. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. There's a reason why I'm going over King Solomon. I'm going over the, 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 the gift that the Lord bestowed upon him to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because that's what he asked for. And the reason why he asked for it, he asked for it to judge the nation of Israel righteously. You understand? I'm going to show you the mindset of King Solomon. Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, read verse 8 now. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 8. Go ahead. I preferred her before scepters and thrones. The hair is wisdom. The hair is wisdom that he said he preferred wisdom before scepters and thrones, before rulership and being a king. You understand? And kingdoms. He preferred wisdom above all the above those things. Read. And the steam riches, nothing in comparison of her. Even the esteemed riches says there's no riches that can be compared to wisdom. That's why he didn't ask for riches and honor. That's why the Lord said, because he didn't ask for that, I'm going to add those things I'm upon you. Read. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone. Uh -huh. Because all gold in respect of her is a little sand. Mm. And silver shall be counted as clay before her. You see that thing? And silver shall be counted as clay before him, meaning what? Compared to wisdom. Read. I love her above health and beauty. That's some heavy stuff right there. Look at that intimate relationship he had with wisdom. The laws of God, the commandments of the Most High God. Brothers, I'm going to tell you right now, the most powerful thing, you understand, above a woman is the laws of the Most High God. Let me say that again. The most powerful thing, second to the woman, is God's commandments. Let me say it again. The most powerful thing second to the woman is God's laws. Understand that thing. If you're not in God's laws, you are going to be overcome. It's not E for me. Read it again. Read it again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. I loved her above health and beauty. Come on. And chose to have her instead of light. You see that thing? He chose to have wisdom instead of light. Go ahead. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. The wisdom that, the, listen, the understanding that comes from wisdom, it never goes out. Read. All good things together came to me with her. Mm -hmm. And innumerable riches in her hands. Because the only reason why he got the wisdom, the, the riches he got was because of the wisdom the Lord put upon him. Read. And I rejoiced in them all. Mm -hmm. Because wisdom goeth before them. You see that thing? Because wisdom goeth before them. Not riches. Wisdom comes before everything else. Read. And I knew not that she was the mother of them. You see that thing? Wisdom is the mother of them all. Understand that. That's a topic for another day. Go ahead. I learned diligently. Mm -hmm. And do communicate her liberally. Be free. And to says, I, hold on. Stay with me. He says, I learned diligently. I mean, he was consistent. He was not slacking. He sat down to study the scriptures. He, he developed an intimate relationship with wisdom. Why? Because he understood that the light that comes from it never goes out. Read. I do not hide her riches. Mm -hmm. 
For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth. You see that thing? Wisdom is a treasure unto men that never faileth. Ray. Which they that use become the friends of God. You see what? You see that part right there? Because our forefather Abraham was called the friend of God. Why? Because our forefather Abraham, he was, he was exercising wisdom. That's why he became the friend of the Most High God. Read. Being commended for the gifts that come from learning. You see that thing? Being commended from the gifts that come from learning. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 1 now. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 1. Let's read there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. Wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily. Mm -hmm. And sweetly doth she order all things. So wisdom will order all things. Wisdom will set things in order in your life. When the scripture says, get that in 2 Esther 14. 2 Esther 14 verse 13. Watch this. This is, this, this what's going to accomplish what we're about to read is wisdom. It's nothing else but wisdom. Read it. Second book of Esther chapter 14 verse 13. Go ahead. Now therefore set thine house in order. You see that? Set your house in order. The only way for you to set your house in order, you must have an intimate relationship with wisdom. Your spiritual house, your spiritual house will only be set in order if you have an intimate relationship with wisdom. Meaning what? You must learn diligently. You must meditate in God's laws day and night, like it says in Joshua 1 and 8. You understand? Go ahead. And reprove thy people. And reprove thy people because why? You will have discipline. You, have, you would have set your house in order. Now you are in the position to reprove your people, to set your nation in order. Because your church begins in your house. The church begins in your house. You set your house in order. Then you are in the, then you qualify to go out there and reprove your nation. Why? Because your house is in order. Go ahead. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Because as a nation, our people is in trouble. We're in captivity. We are in slavery. We are oppressed. We are, we, are, we, are, we are in prison houses. Christianity, politics, religion. You understand? Democracy, all of that. All of those are prisons in the minds of the black men and the black women. Hispanic men. You understand? Native, Native American Indian men. Women and child. Go ahead. And now renounce corruption. And now you're going to renounce corruption. How? With the laws of God. Because wisdom will give you all that. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Okay, chapter 8, read verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily. Mm -hmm. Sweetly that she order all things. So wisdom will order all things, will allow you to, will help you to set things in order. Your spiritual house, your physical house, your nation, the wisdom of the Lord will allow you to do that thing. Go ahead. I love them. And sought her out from the youth, from my youth. You see that? He says he loved her. He loved wisdom and sought wisdom out from his youth. Hold that. Give me that in Sirach chapter 6, okay? Give me Ecclesiasticus because in Sirach, the scripture actually explains that thing. Sirach chapter 6 verse 18. Watch this. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 18. Come on. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. You see that? Gather instruction from the youth up. What are you gathering? What instructions are you gathering? The wisdom of the Lord, the most high God. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. Then you're going to find wisdom in your old age. So go back. Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 2. Uh -huh. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. Come on. I desired to make her my spouse. Mm -hmm. And I was a lover of her beauty. You see that thing? So the first love as a man, that you must, your first love is God's commandments. Understand that? God's commandments and the most said God. That's what I said last night, brothers, that listen, your love, you must love the most said God more than you love your wife. Understand that? And she must understand it because that's the order. She loves you more then you love her because you love the most High God more. Is that simple? You understand? It is what it is, brothers. It is what it is, sisters. Understand that thing. Read again, verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 2. Come on. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. Mm -hmm. I desired to make her my spouse. 
And I was a lover of her beauty. And I was a lover of her beauty. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 22 now. The chapter before it. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 22. Mm -hmm. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her... For wisdom, wisdom will teach you. Wisdom is a teacher. Wisdom is the worker of all things. All things that are created you see upon this earth, you understand? It was because of the wisdom of the most said God during the creation account. Go ahead. For in her is an understanding spirit. So when we get understanding, guess what? We apply God's laws, we receive understanding. That's the spirit of wisdom. That's the spirit of Christ. Read. Holy. Mm -hmm. One holy. Manifold. Subtle. Wisdom Life. is subtle. Come on. Wisdom is lively. That's why, you, that's why we receive lively oracles. You understand? To give us life. Because wisdom will give you life. Read. Clear. It's clear. It's not confusing. When you keep God's commandments, guess what? You're going to have a clear understanding of what's going on in the book. Read. Undefiled. Undefiled. Wisdom is undefiled. Read. Plain. You see that? So here's the thing. I need you men to pay attention here. You see that part when it says undefiled? Because remember, Adam was defiled by who? By the woman when he listened to his wife. Because the wife brought what philosophies. That's why it says these are they which were not defiled with women for their virgins. You see that thing? Because at that point, Adam, he decided, he made, he made a decision knowing that it was wrong, but he made it anyway. You understand? He knew to do better, but he didn't do better. Ray, come on. Not subject to hurt. Not subject to hurt. Meaning what? You're not going to, that was blessed. Get, get that in Matthew 11. Let's understand what that means. Not subject to hurt. Watch this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Some of you men have talked to you about, you know, catching feelings. I see those spirits are coming back. It's time to repent. Matthew chapter 11, read verse 6. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. That's the message right there. Okay. Go back to where it was at. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Read. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Mm -hmm. For in her is an understanding spirit. Come on. Holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, mm -hmm. clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt. Not subject to hurt. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Go ahead. Loving the things that is good. Uh -huh, the commandments. Read. Quick. Which cannot be lettered. Which cannot be stopped. The wisdom of the Most High God cannot be stopped. Read. Ready to do good. Ready. Ready to do good. Go ahead. Kind to men. Kind to men. Come on. Steadfast. Steadfast, meaning unimmovable. You are not wavering. You are not movable. The, the, a spade is a spade. There's no if or may. Mm -mm, it is what it is. You don't move left or right when it comes to this book. That's why it says steadfast. Hold that. Give me that in Sarah chapter 5. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 5. Give me verse 10. Watch this. Start of verse 9. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 5 is 9. Go ahead. We know not with every wind. You see that? Don't we know with every wind, meaning every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. You can read that in Ephesians 4, verse 13, verse 14. Go ahead. And go not into every way. Don't go into every way, meaning you listen to this one, you listen to that one, you're not steadfast in your understanding. The Lord said, don't, do, don't be double-minded. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For so that the sinner that hath a double tongue they saw that the sinner that had a double take. You say one thing here, and it contradicts the other. The Lord says, don't be like that. Go ahead. Be steadfast in thy understanding. Mm -hmm. And let thy word be the same. You see that? Be steadfast in your understanding, and let your word be the same. If the Sabbath begins at sundown, you understand? It begins at sundown. Sundown to sundown. You understand? 
It's not sunrise. Mm -mm. It's when the sun goes down, that's the beginning of a new day. That's it. Do you understand? That's why let your word be the same. Be steadfast in your understanding, the Lord is saying, and wisdom of the Lord will give you just that. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 23. Come on. Kind to men. Mm -hmm. Steadfast. Ray. Sure. Mm -hmm. Free from care. That's the same thing we read when it says, not subject to head. Free from care. Go ahead. Having all power. Having all power. Come on. Overseeing all things. Overseeing all things. That, that means what? Setting things in order. That's what it says, overseeing all things. Go ahead. And going through all understanding. Mm -hmm. Pure and most subtle spirits. And most subtle spirit. That's wisdom for you. Go ahead. Come on. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. One thing you need to understand is that wisdom is a movement. You understand? What's going on right now, this is the, this is the, this is the movement that comes with understanding the wisdom of the most High God. You understand? Because we understand the laws of God, we are applying them. We're doing our best to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Guess what? We are forming a movement. We have formed a movement. That's why now when we march, we go to camp, we march, we shut down the street. That's a movement. And guess what? We are able to show our people something they've never seen before, which is what? Seeing black men stand up. Because understand, People, our, especially our nation, our people, especially our sisters, they've been saying, we want the black man to stand up. You understand? They've been saying, no, the black man doesn't want to take the lead. Now the black man is taking the lead. Guess what? They don't like how the black man is standing up. There's been complaints. The black, we want the black man to stand up and be a leader, take his rightful place. Well, the black man is doing that in the spirit of the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. They, the problem is, they don't like how the black man is standing up. You see the problem? You see the point? Why? Because wisdom is a movement, brothers. Wisdom is a movement. Read the verse again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24. Go ahead. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. You see that? She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. But I want you to see something here. Next verse. Go ahead. Watch this. For she is the breath of the power of God. So wisdom is the breath of the power of God. The same breath that was given to Adam from Genesis 2 verse 7. Get that real quick. Genesis 2 verse 7. This is what was given to our forefather Adam. You understand? Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Uh-huh. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Come on. And man became a living soul. You see that? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living soul. So guess what? Go back to where he was at. So Adam was given the breath of the power of the Most High God. Adam was a God on earth. With the breath of the power of the Most High God. Wisdom of the Most High God from on high. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 25. Mm-hmm. For she is the breath of the power of God. Come on. And a pure influence mm -hmm. flowing from the glory of the Almighty. So wisdom is a pure influence. You understand? Wisdom is a pure influence. There is why you see, like for instance, politics. Politics is not a pure influence because it's not, it's not the spirit of the Lord in there. The spirit of the Lord is not in there. So that's why it's not a pure influence because politics is supposed to influence our people to get married. Politics is supposed to influence the black man to take care of his kids. Politics is supposed to influence the black woman to stop wearing pants and put on a dress. Politics is supposed to influence the black woman to stop committing abortion. Politics must influence the black man to stop stealing, robbing, murdering, and raping. That's what they but, but But guess what? There is, politics is not a pure influence. That's why the, the type of change that are really going to affect our nation in a positive way, they are not taking place in all these movements, politics, democracy, religion, and all that, is not changing nothing. Toitoing is not changing nothing. Why? Because it's not a pure influence. That's why. But what we're doing, 
is the pure influence because what? We coming in the name of the Lord. We teach God's commandment. We're teaching our people to change. The problem with all these movements, they never require the people to change. If you, if you, you, you smoke weed, join the party. You smoking cigarette, join the party. You committing abortion, no problem. All of that, they never require the people to change. You're not married, so are you having sex? Yes, listen, you cannot be here. Come back when you're married. They don't teach that. That's why it's not a pure influence. That's why politics has been here forever. Nothing has changed. Things still the same. Why? Because it's not a pure influence. Read the verse again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. For she is the breath of the power of God. Mm -hmm. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. You see that? A pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Not flowing from the what? Not flowing from the manifesto. No, it's not flowing from the manifesto. It's flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Go ahead. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her? You see that thing? There's no defiled thing that can fall into wisdom because it's flowing from the glory of the Almighty. It, that's why it's a pure influence. But all these other movements, they are not flowing from the glory of the Almighty. They are flowing from the imagination of men. That's why they, are, they don't come to nothing. Understand that, okay? And King Solomon, he had all that. He understood all that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 4. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 4. Go ahead. For she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And a lover of his works. So wisdom gives you, wisdom gives you a preview to the mysteries of the knowledge of God. So that's why our forefathers, they understood deep mysteries and all that. Dark parables and dark sayings. Why? Because they had the spirit of the Lord upon them. Read. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, uh -huh. what is richer than wisdom? Nothing. That worketh all things. That worketh all things. Come on. And if prudence work, who of all that are, who of all that are, is a more cunning workman than she? No, nah, there's nothing that is more cunning workmen than wisdom because it's flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Go ahead. And if a man love righteousness, mm -hmm. her labors are virtues. You see that then the labors of wisdom are virtues. Go ahead. For she teacheth temperance and prudence, mm -hmm. justice and fortitude, Read. which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life you see that thing so wisdom will give you these things if a man love righteousness her labors are virtues for she teacheth temperance and prudence justice and fortitude fortitude goes into what you are immovable you understand fortitude means that you've got spine you understand you've got some cajones you can put your boots on go to the streets and put negroes on blast and bring them into the street whether they hear or whether they were forbid no fear, no favor. Wisdom will give you that thing. Will give you fortitude. You understand? That's why mama's pampered boys cannot hit the streets. They cannot. They are not built for that. You understand? Now, watch this. You go back to Wisdom of Solomon. You go back to Sarak now. Sarak 47 verse 13. Watch this. Pay close attention. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47 verse 13. Go ahead. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time uh -huh. and, was, and was honored. For God made all quiet round about him that he might build a house in his name and prepare mm -hmm. his sanctuary forever. So now King Solomon was ruling and he was endowed with all this knowledge, wisdom and understanding above everybody else that walked the earth during his time. So I, I took you through all that to understand the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon our forefather King Solomon. Keep reading. Go ahead. How wise was thou in thy youth? Mm -hmm. And as a flood filled with understanding. You see that thing? It says, how wise was thou in thy youth? Why is he saying that? Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 2. Watch this thing right here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 2. Mm -hmm. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. You see that? He says he loved wisdom and sought wisdom out from his youth. 
Read. I desired to make her my spouse. Go ahead. And I was a lover of her beauty. And I was a lover of your beauty because wisdom is beautiful. Go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of uh, Sirach chapter 47, verse 14. One more again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 14. Mm -hmm. How wise was thou in thy youth? And as a flood filled with understanding. So Solomon was not a pond. He was not a small little river. He was a flood. He was here. He, he was a, he was like a flood of understanding. The Lord really blessed him with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Understand that. Go ahead. Thy soul covered the whole earth. Hmm. And thou fillest it with dark parables. He says his soul covered the whole earth. The whole planet earth. He says his soul covered the whole earth. Now that's some heavy stuff what he just said. There's a topic for another day. And thou fillest it with dark parables. Watch this. Go ahead. That goes into the interpretations. These, these King Solomon's books, Wisdom of Solomon, you understand? Uh, Ecclesiastes, you understand? The book of Proverbs, so on and so forth. Go ahead. The countries marvel. No, no, no. Verse 16. Read verse 16. You jump, you skipped. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Thy name went far into the islands, and for thy peace thou was beloved. You see that thing? It says, thy name went far unto the islands. Because why? Because nations will come to Jerusalem to hear King Solomon's wisdom. That's why you've got the book called The Wisdom of Solomon. Because people, nations will come from afar off to come and hear the wisdom from King Solomon and take it back to your own countries to set their nations in order. Go ahead. The countries marveled at thee for thy songs. Uh -huh. That's the song of Solomon. Go ahead. And Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, read. And parables. The book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and all that. Come on. And interpretations. Wisdom of Solomon. Come on. By the name of the Lord God, which is called the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. thou didst gather gold as tin, and mm -hmm. didst not supply silver as lead. So now King Solomon was the richest, the wisest. The mo Listen. He was war, he was renowned for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, first and foremost, not only that, and for his riches. Remember, it says, nobody going to be richer than you in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and in actual riches, in gold and silver and all that. Nobody was going, nobody came close to King Solomon. That's what we read in 2 Chronicles chapter 1. Okay, read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 18. Mm-hmm. By the name of the Lord God, which is called the Lord God of Israel, thou didst gather gold as tin, and didst multiply silver as lead. Now here's the problem. You see all these great things about King Solomon, our forefather, he had a dumb spirit with him. Watch this. Go ahead. Thou didst buy thy loins unto woman. That's the problem right there. You see the problem right there? That was his, that was his vice. That was his vice right there. His vice was women. He got defiled by women. Read again verse 19. I took you through all this so I can show you the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon our forefather King Solomon. But guess what? When he turned a blind eye to wisdom, this is what came in. I told you. The most, the, listen, the second most powerful thing to wisdom is the woman. The most powerful thing second to the, to the, world, to the laws of God is a woman. So when he turned a blind eye to the laws of God, guess what? The second most powerful thing that affected him was what? A woman. That's the same thing that happened to our forefather Adam. Hmm. Technically, okay. Let me not say nothing. Read the verse again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 19. Go ahead. Thou didst bow thy loins unto woman. Uh -huh. And by thy body, thou wast brought into subjection. You see that thing? By his body. By the lust of his flesh, he was brought unto subjection unto these women. You see the problem? Hold this. Give me first Esdras, because I said something about the most second most powerful thing to a woman, to, a, to the laws of God, is a woman. <laughs> hmm. Man, watch this. Give me first Esdras 4, okay? No, give me first Esdras 3 verse 10. Watch this. 
First book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. The first wrote, wine is the strongest. Go ahead. The second wrote, the king is strongest. So now you've got, you've got, you've got our, our forefathers here. They are talking about what is the strongest thing on earth. One said wine is the strongest. Another one said the king is the strongest. Watch this. Go ahead. The third wrote, women are strongest. You see what he said? The third wrote, that was the ruler of our forefathers. The third wrote, women are strongest. Go ahead. But above all things, truth uh -huh. beareth away victory. No, beareth away the victory. You see what Zerubbabel is saying? Because it's Zerubbabel. Give me First Ezra 4, read verse 13, so we see who's the third that said women are the strongest, but above all things, meaning above wine, the king, and women, which is the strongest, women is stronger than wine, and the king is one. What is above the woman is one. There's truth. The laws of God. You see that? Now, first Ezra 4, verse 13. Watch this. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 13. Go ahead. Then the third, who had spoken of women and of the truth, mm -hmm. this was Zerubbabel, began to speak. So Zerubbabel, our forefather, is the one that said the women are the strongest, but above the above the thing that is stronger than women is wisdom. The laws of the Most High God. Watch this. Give me First Ezra four, read verse thirty-seven. First book of Ezra, chapter four, verse thirty-seven. You know what? Let's just go through it. Give me First Ezra four, read verse. Let's read verse fourteen. Let's just read verse fourteen. We're gonna read down. First book of Ezra, chapter four, verse fourteen. Go ahead. Oh, ye men. It is not the great king, nor the multitude of men. Neither is it wine that so excels. So now, Zerubbabel is saying, listen, um, the king is not strongest. Wine is not strongest. You understand? He's going to tell you the thing that is stronger than these things. Go ahead. Who is it then that ruleth them? Uh -huh. Or who hath the lordship over them? Come on. Are they not women? You see what he's saying? Are they not women? What excels the wine and the king is the woman. Go ahead. Women have borne the king and all the people that be ruled by sea and land. You see that being they came between her feet. Go ahead. Even of them came they. Uh -huh. And they nourished them up that planted the vineyards from whence the wine cometh. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, listen, they given birth to the people that are planting the, 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 the vineyards where wine cometh. Go ahead. These also make garments for men. They make garments for men. Our foremother Tabitha, who created garments for men and all that. Yes, they do that. Go ahead. These bring glory unto men. That's Genesis 2.21 down. Go ahead. And without women cannot men be. Ray, watch this. Go ahead. Yea, and if men have gathered together gold and silver, or any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? You see that thing is that don't they love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? Be meaning more comely and beautiful than gold and silver. The same, the things that King Solomon had here, he says he gathered gold as tin, silver as tin and all that. But guess what? It says, do they not bring all to the woman because who's comely and more beautiful than they? Go ahead. And letting all those things go, uh -huh. do they not gape? And even with open mouth, Fix their eyes fast on her. You see that thing is that do not let, do, do they not gaze upon this woman? They be not looking at her with their mouth open. Go ahead. And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold. Pray. Or any goodly thing whatsoever. Or any goodly thing whatsoever. Because he's letting him know that the women are the strongest than one. The king and the wine, the silver and the gold. Go ahead. A man liveth his own father that brought him up mm. and his own country and cleaveth unto his wife. You see that thing? That's what we read. That's Genesis 2.24 right here. That's what Adam said in Genesis 2.24. Go ahead. He sticketh not to spend his life with his wife mm -hmm. and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. You see that thing? He don't remember father nor he don't remember the parents that brought him up. 
But he what? He cleaveth to his wife. That's still Genesis 2.24. Go ahead. First book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 22. Pray. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. You see that thing? By this also you must know. He says, by this, by all these things that I just explained, you must know that women have dominion over you. Go ahead. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? That's what he's asking. Do you not labor and toil? You understand? What is this talking about? Hold this. Give me that in Genesis 3.17. Let me show you that. Because the Lord, he spoke about that thing after Adam listened to his woman. Genesis 3 verse 17. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see that thing? It says, in sorrow is as cursed as the ground for thy sake. You're going to work hard now, Adam. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Jump down to verse 19. Go ahead. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. You see that thing? You're going to work hard. You have to work extra hard just to make it, just to get the, the crumbs that are falling from the master's table and bring to the woman. Go ahead. Till the return unto the ground. Until you drop dead. Breathe. For out of it was thou taken. Mm -hmm. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You see that thing? Go back to where it was at. First Ezra 4. Read verse 21. Verse 22 again. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 22. Go ahead. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Mm-hmm. Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? That's exactly, that's what we read in Genesis 3. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. You see that? It says a man taketh his sword. When you look at the wars that have erupted upon this earth, guess what? Women was always in the midst. Women was always in the midst, influencing how the battle gets to be fought. Meaning, nations coming to war because of a woman. You understand? So, but what I'm showing you here is, it says, yeah, a man taketh this sword. Today, what is the sword that we use in brothers? The Bible. So imagine if you are married to a demon. How are you, how is your war, how is your, your, your military life going to be affected? It's going to, it, it will either be affected in a positive way or in a negative way depending who you married to. You see the point? Hmm. Topic for another day. Read that again, verse 23. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 23. Read. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. Men are willing to rob and to steal and to rob countries and continents and resources upon those lands and to, to, to steal people. To put people in slavery, apartheid, colonization, forced migration, all for the woman. Go ahead. And looketh upon a lion, and goeth in the darkness. Me, me, listen, he says a man will face a lion. Guess what? Hmm. There's a movie here, yeah, Idris Alba. I think it's upcoming. He is willing to face a lion for the family. <laughs> Read the thing again. You should watch the trailer of that movie. Okay. Read the verse again. First book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 24. Read. And looketh upon a lion, and goeth in the darkness. And when he hath stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. You see that thing? He robbed and spoiled, and he will bring it to all to his love. Look at the women of the other nations. They be wearing gold on their necks. The queen of England with the, with, with the crown of diamonds on her head. Where are they getting that stuff from? They are stealing from the Congo. They are stealing from Sierra Leone. They are stealing from Kimberley. They are stealing from Kalin and Pretoria. They are stealing the minerals from this continent and taking them back and dressing and putting them onto their children. That's what the nations have done to us. You understand? And they bring all to the woman. Go ahead. Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father and mother. Hmm. Go ahead. That is letting, he's giving you the power that the woman has. Go ahead. 
Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. They mean they've run out of their wits, meaning they've lost their damn minds for a woman. Go ahead. And become servants for their sake. You see that? And become simps for their sakes. Go ahead. Many also have perished, mm -hmm. have erred and sinned for women. Now, Zerubbabel is talking, in, he's, he's been metaphoric here. He says, many also have perished, meaning they've dropped dead, and have erred, they've sinned, and is, they've erred, meaning they erred in the faith, and have sinned for women. What is this talking about? When it says, they've perished, they've erred in the faith, and have sinned for women. It's talking about what's between the legs. That's what he's talking about here. He's just being nice. You understand? He's being nice. So Zerubbabel is letting you know the most powerful drug on a woman is what? Is what's between her legs. Understand that? That's why today, if you're not in this Bible, guess what? You're worshiping a woman. I don't care who you are, how much money you got, as long as you are not in this Bible, keeping God's commandments as an Israelite, guess what? The woman is ruling over you. I'm going to tell you right now, understand that. And as long as you hate what is coming out, you hate the same classes that have been put out, guess what? A woman is ruling over you. You are defiled by a woman. Now keep going. And now, do you not believe me? Mm -hmm. Is not the king great in his power? Now he's giving an example of how powerful a woman has over a king. Read. Do not all regions fear to touch him. Meaning the regions, meaning the real, the regions that is ruling over, they fear to touch him. But watch this. Go ahead. Yet did I see him and Apami, the king's mm -hmm. concubine. The king's concubine. Look at the power that the concubine has over the king. Read. Your daughter of the admirable Bartikus, mm -hmm. sitting at the right hand of the king. She was sitting at the right hand of the king, on the king's right hand. You can't make this up. Go ahead. And taking the crown from the king's head. Mm, hold on. Look at the disrespect. Because why? What's between the coach is too powerful. You understand? Go ahead. And setting it upon her own head. Look at the level of disrespect. She took the king's crown from of his own head and put it on her own head. Watch what she does next. Go ahead. She also struck the king with her left hand. She smacked the king across the face. Mm. Go ahead. And yet, for all this, the king gaped. The king and gaped. He opened his he opened his mouth because he was a simp. Go ahead. And gazed upon her with open mouth. Ha! Huh. Go ahead. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. You see that when if she cause she she take the she take she took the crown from the king's head and put it on her own head. Not only there, she smacked the king across the face and the king opened mouth. Now the king is, is, is surprised. Now she laughs. The king stopped being surprised. The king laughs also. Keep going. Mm. If she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter. The king was, the king had to bow down to flatter this woman. What the hell is this? Go ahead. That she might be reconciled to him again. Meaning what? She may beg him. She, she may beg the woman. You understand? Girl, I drink your bath water. You ever know anybody? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> anybody know that song? Hold on a second. Let me look for that song. What the hell is this? <laughs> you cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. Hold on a second. Let me look for that thing. The coochie stage at us. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's see. Hold on a second. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm, no, I got to play this thing. You see, this coochie business, this thing is too dangerous. Very dangerous business. You simple Negroes up in here. Hmm. These sim classes, they are coming. Understand that. Hold on. Let me play this thing. Now, that's the brother right there. Only Nightingale. 
You see what, you, what you look at what he has in his left hand. What does he have? You brother see my screen? Yes, sir. Now that right there, that's the bath water in the glass. Right there, that's the soap. You see the woman in the bath? Mm. That's the woman in the tub. He's got a glass of water, of bath water. He's about <laughs> to drink. Now let's play the song. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see none of you doing all this garbage. Listen, <laughs> man. Listen. Let me let me go back a little bit. What the hell is this? <laughs> Okay, and he's Benjamin. You can't make this up. Okay, give me first. <laughs> give me first as a sport. <laughs> he's Benjamin. He's Benjamin. Read the Bible. He's verse thirty-one. You can't make this up. Come on, come on. First book of Esther, chapter four, verse thirty-one. And yet, for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. Go ahead. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. Mm -hmm. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter mm -hmm. that she might be reconciled to him again. Because he's, the Zerubbabel is letting you know how powerful women are. That's why King Solomon he bowed his is he bowed down to women. He gave he he subjected himself to these thousand women that he was dealing with. Go ahead. Oh, ye men. How can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? You see what he's asking? He says, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do this? Read. Really? Then the king and the princes looked one upon another. Mm -hmm. So he began to speak of the truth. He began, you see that? He began to speak of the truth. Because Rubabel was on point. He didn't care about the king. He told the king the truth to his face. Go ahead. Oh, you woman. Excuse me, sir. Oh, ye men, are not women strong? Mm -hmm. Great is the earth, high is the heaven. Go Swift ahead. is the sun in his course. Mm -hmm. For he compasseth the heavens round about. Go ahead. And fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day. So now he's explaining what we read in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 4 down through verse 9. Come on. Is he not great that maketh these things? The Lord is the one is the Lord is great that maketh these things. Go ahead. Therefore, great is the truth. Great is the truth. Come on. And stronger than all things. And stronger than all things. So great is the truth and stronger than all things. What is the Rubabel telling us here in the Spirit of the Lord? The Zerubbabel is letting us know that we must stay in the Bible so we don't get defiled with women. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? The second, the, the most powerful thing, second only to the laws of God, is the woman. That's what Zerubbabel is letting us know here in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. All the earth calleth upon the truth. Uh -huh. And the heaven ble blesseth it. Read. All works shake and tremble at it. They tremble at the truth, come on. And with it is no unrighteous thing. Because the truth is the wisdom of the Lord which cannot be defiled which cannot be lettered, you understand, is a pure influence. Read. Wine is wicked. Wine is wicked, come on. The king is wicked. The king is wicked, read. Women are wicked. And women are wicked, come on. All the children of men are wicked. All the children of men are wicked as hell, come on. And such are all their wicked works. Read. And there is no truth in them. No light in them, come on. In their unrighteousness, also they shall perish. They're going to drop dead. Go ahead, come on. 
As for the truth. As for the truth, read. It endureth. It endureth. Come on. And is always strong. And is always strong. Read. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. Come on. With her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards. Read. But she doeth the things that are just. Come on. And refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. Come on. And all men do well like her. And all men do well like of her works. Read. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Come on. And she is the strength, kingdom, power, and mm. majesty of Come all on. ages. Read. Blessed be the God of truth. Blessed be the God of truth. Understand it. So the truth is everything. Go ahead. Verse 41. Come on. And with that, he held his peace. Mm -hmm. And all the people then shouted and said, Come on. Great is truth. Great and is truth. Great is truth and mighty mm -hmm. above all things. And great is truth and mighty above all things. That's what I need you men to understand. The second, the most powerful thing, second only to the wisdom of the most high God, is the woman. You understand? And guess what? When Adam, you understand, when he turned a blind eye to wisdom, what, what was the most, what was the second most powerful thing that defiled him? Was what was was what? The woman. The woman defiled, he allowed woman, a woman to defile him when a woman, when Eve gave when Eve was advising him, King Solomon, what was his vice? His vice was that what he turned a blind eye to wisdom for a while. Guess what happened to him? He got defiled by a woman, by women, multiple of them. Now let's go back to Sirach. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 47. Sirach 47. Read verse 19 now. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 19. Read. Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. Mm -hmm. And by the and by thy body thou was brought into subjection. By his body, by the lust of his flesh, he was brought into subjection to these women that is bowed his loins to. Go ahead. Thou didst stain thy honor. Mm -hmm. He stained his honor because now we are able to read about what King Solomon did and all his strange women, the thousand women that he had. Who, who sleeps with the thousand women? Who does that? Go ahead. And pollute thy seed. Mm -hmm. And he pol and pollute thy seed because who came out out of Jer out of out of King Solomon Jeroboam, I mean Rehoboam. Rehoboam came out of King Solomon and he was evil. He was wicked as hell. He was dumb. Read. So that thou broughtest wrath upon thy children. He brought wrath upon his children. Read Rehoboam after him. Go ahead. And was grieved for thy folly. He was grieved that his children were grieved for his folly. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Kings 11 and 1. Let's read about his folly. Let's read that. As wise as he was, King Solomon, that wisest man that walked the earth, guess what? He had a vice also. He had a, his, vice, his vice was what? Women. Read that. 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 1. Watch this. First book of Kings chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. They were meaning the, the, the daughter of Pharaoh, that's the Hamites. Go ahead. Women of the Moabites. That's the Chinese, read. Ammonites. The Japanese. Edomites. White people. Zidonians. The Zidonians that goes into the Hamites. Go ahead. And Hittites. Canaanites, come on. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they come in unto you. Read. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. After their gods. Come on. Solomon clave unto these in love. Because why? King Solomon, when he was dealing with all these strange women of the other nations, guess what? He started to worship their gods. He went to, into idolatry. You understand? Because I have some experience in that thing. Understand it. Go ahead. 
And he had Don't 700 me. wives. I'm going to respond like this. All praise to the Lord for this truth. Understand that. Keep going. The hell is this? Go ahead. And he had 700 wives. Mm -hmm. Princesses and 300 concubines. You see that? He says he had 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines. So when you add them all together, it's a thousand women. Go ahead. And his wives turn away his heart. His wife turned away his heart. Guess what he did? He started to worship the strange gods, Molech and all that. Ashtoreth. Go ahead. Verse 4. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his mm -hmm. wives turned away his heart after, the, after other gods. You see that thing? He went into idolatry. Come on. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. Mm -hmm. As was the heart of David, his father. You see that thing? As was the heart of David, his father. Go ahead. Verse 5. I'm going to give an example of this. Read. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. The Ashtoreth. You see what Ashtoreth? Ashtoreth is Ishtar. 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 Inanna. The queen of heaven. Diana of the Ephesians. You understand? Worshipping the woman. That's why it says he bowed his loins unto women. You understand? And by his body, he was subject unto those women. These thousand women. You understand? Go ahead. And after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites. You see that thing? Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites. These are the strange gods of these other nations. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. So King Solomon, he had a dumb spirit on him. What was his dumb spirit? What was his, his vice? Women. Women was his vice. That's what happened to our forefather Adam. Now that was the same thing that's happening to our forefather King Solomon here. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes 7.25. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. Go ahead. I applied my, my heart to know mm -hmm. and to search and to seek out wisdom. Mm-hmm. And the reason of things. You see what he was doing? He says he applied his mind to know and to search and to seek out wisdom. This wisdom here is not the wisdom that the Lord bestowed on him. No. It's the wisdom of understanding why do these other nations worship these gods? Why do people do evil? I want to test. I want to experience these evil things. Why do, why do, they, do they do evil? I want to see what the evil, the evil that comes upon them. When do these, they do these evil things? Because he had too much time on his hand. He was rich. He was dealing with all these multiple women. He, listen, he didn't know what to do with himself at this point. You understand? Read that again, verse 25. Of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom mm -hmm. and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly. You see that thing? To know the wickedness of folly. So what does that mean? He wanted to know the wickedness of folly, meaning the evil that comes with doing evil things. So he was experimenting. He needed to know, oh, this drug does this. I want to know. This drug is able to make you do this, to see multiple things. He wanted to know he did it. So he had experience in these things. That's why it says he wanted to know the wickedness of folly. Go ahead. Even of foolishness and madness. Because he also went into foolishness. He went into madness. You understand? He did that. All this. Give me Ecclesiastes 1. Read verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I communed with, with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate. Ray. And have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Read. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. You see what he's telling us? He says his mind, he had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. He, it was not something that he just knew by thinking about it. Or no, 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 he did it. Whatever he thought came to mind, whatever thought came to his mind, he did it. He experienced it. You understand? That's why he says he had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. Go ahead. And I gave my heart to know wisdom, mm -hmm. and to know madness and folly. You see what he's telling us? He's, he's confessing. Remember, Ecclesiastes is a book of regret. You understand? He's telling us that when he was doing all these things, these are the things that he fell into when he was going, when he was going the hell off. 
Go ahead. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. Is vexation of spirit because his spirit was vexed with these things that he was partaking in. Read. For in much wisdom is much grief. Mm -hmm. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. He's talking about the knowledge about the evil things that he was doing. The evil to know madness and folly. That's the grief he's talking about. You cannot get grief by knowing the laws of the Most High God like that. He's not talking about that. Give me Ecclesiastes 2 verse 7 now. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. I got me servants and maidens. Uh -huh. And had servants born in my house. Really? Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. So he was wealthy. You understand? He had great possessions. Servants and maidens. Go ahead. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. Read. I get me men singers and women singers. Read. And the delights of the sons of men mm -hmm. as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So he was gathering all these things because he had too much time on his hands. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. So I was great. Mm -hmm and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. You see the point right there? It says, also, my wisdom remained with me. You see, you, you see what's going on here? He, he had wisdom to know that what I'm doing is wrong. What I'm doing is evil, but I'm doing it anyway because I want to know. I want to find out. I want to know why people do the evils they do. Why do people get high? I also want to get high and find out. You understand why people smoke nyaope? I want to know. This was the thing that he was doing. So he had enough wisdom to know that what he's doing is going the hell off. He had enough wisdom to know that. That's why he's saying, he says, also, my wisdom remained with me. Go ahead. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. You see that part right there? That means anything went. That's why he says, whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. Read. I withheld not my heart from any joy. Mm -hmm. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. Go ahead. And this was my portion of all my labor. Jump down to verse 17. Watch this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore I hated life. You see what he's saying? So with all these things that he was doing, he was experimenting with doing all, experimenting with evil and all that. And wisdom remained with him still. But he was still experimenting with evil. Guess what? That's why he keeps saying, this also is vexation of spirit. You understand? That's why he's saying here, yeah. therefore, I hated life. Because why? The, the evil and the folly that he went into, the madness, that wasn't life. That wasn't the life that the Lord gave unto him. That was not a pure influence. That's why he's saying, I hated life. Go ahead. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. You see what he's saying? Now he hates everything that he's done. Go ahead. For all is vexation, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Go ahead. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Mm -hmm. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. You see what he's saying? He didn't care about the next generation. That means Rehoboam. He didn't care about that. Read. Right? And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Mm -hmm. You see that? Because why? At this point, he was doing evil, even though he had the wisdom to know to stop, but he didn't stop. Go ahead. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored. You see that thing? I mean, he's not thinking about the next generation that's coming after him. Read. And wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun, this is also vanity. This is also vanity. So that's what he was saying. Go ahead. Therefore, I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. So now what he's saying here is, listen, he's telling you that what he was doing was evil. It was vexing his spirit. That's why the reason why his spirit was vexed is because wisdom still remained with him. Because if wisdom didn't remain with him, this was not going to vex his spirit. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of 
Ecclesiastes 4, read verse 13 now. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 13. Go ahead. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king. Mm -hmm. Who will no more be admonished. Because, read that again, read it again, verse 13. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse, verse 13. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. So what he's saying is, says, better is a poor and a wise child. So he's remembering how he was poor and he was, he was a wise child. That's why it says he sought wisdom out from his youth. He's remembering how he was in his youth. He says what? Than an old and foolish king, because he was older now at this point. He was old and he was being foolish. He says, who will no more be admonished, not corrected. You understand? So now what he's doing is what? He's now, he's, he's, he's starting to recover himself. But before we go there, let's go back to Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 26 now. Watch this. Because remember, he was dealing with a thousand women and they made him to what? They went, because remember, these thousand women, 300 of which went into, were pushing idolatry and the 700 also, they were also pushing idolatry. They were Israelites, but they were pushing idolatry. The, the, the heathens ones, they were, they were not Israelites, they were also pushing idolatry. And guess what? He went to worship all those other idols. That's why he's going to say what he's saying here. Watch, read what you got. Watch this. Verse 26. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. And I find more bitter than death the woman mm -hmm. whose heart is snares and nets. Now he's talking about all these women that he's dealing with. 700 and, and 300 concubines. He's talking about all of them. He says, I find more bitter than death. He says, I'm finding something that is better. Is bitter than death. What's bitter than death? He says, this type of woman whose, whose heart is a snare and net, meaning her job is to entrap you, is to destroy you, is give you problems in your life. Read. And her hands as bands. And her hands as bands. She's going to hold you down not to do the work of the Lord. Read. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her. If you want to please the Lord, you are going to run from this woman. Go ahead. But the sinner shall be taken by her. So now he's letting you know, but he was the sinner that got taken by these women. Watch this. Read. Behold, this have I found, said the preacher, counting mm -hmm. one by one to find out the account. He says he was counting one by one, meaning all the thousand women, he counted them one by one to find the number, the account. Watch this, read. Which yet my soul seeketh, but mm. I find not. Go ahead. One man among a thousand have I found. Mm -hmm. He says one man among a thousand. The one man is talking about himself. The thousand is the thousand women that he was with. He says he found one wise man among these thousand women. Meaning they were all dumb as hell. Okay, read. But a woman among all those have I not found. You see that thing? But a woman out of, but there was none, no women out of all these thousand women that was wise. He was the only one that was wise among all these thousand women. You understand? Go ahead. Lo, this only have I found. Mm -hmm. That God hath made man upright. Come on. But they have sought out many inventions. You see that thing? He says, God made men upright. He says, this only have I found, that God had made men upright. Because he was made upright. He was given the laws of God. He prayed for wisdom. The Lord gave him that wisdom. But he says, but they, made, but men, meaning himself, he found out many inventions. He started to, uh, to look for madness and folly, to look for evil. You understand? To see what it means to do evil, to experience it. That's why it says, I gave my heart to madness and folly. I did that. That's what he's saying. Watch this. In Ecclesiastes 12, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Read verse 7 now. Read verse 8. Read verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 is 8. Go ahead. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. So now the question is, did King Solomon recover himself? Yes, he recovered himself. But what I'm showing you is this wisest man that walked the earth, guess what? When he gave his mind to go into folly and madness, guess what? That's when 
the most powerful thing, second to wisdom, what? Overtook him, which was what? Women. And how many did he have? A thousand of them. Okay? Read. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. You see that thing? Because the preacher was wise. Because now he's telling you, listen, I remember, I recover, I'm recovering myself. Watch this. Read verse one. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. You see what he's saying? He says, because he was an old and foolish king, although he recovered himself, he's saying, listen, don't remember your creator when you are old. No, he says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Meaning, don't, don't get to the old age. You understand? Meaning, don't get the wisdom and go into folly and have to recover yourself all of because there's a lot of hard work. You understand? He says, rather, remember your creator in your youth. When you come into this truth, that's your youth. No matter what age you're in, remember your creator in that youth, in your days of repentance, because you're still here. You are a child. You are a, you are a newborn. He says, remember your creator and stick to that. Don't do what I did. That's what he's saying. Read again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Go ahead. While the evil days come not, Read. nor the years draw nigh, mm -hmm. when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. He says, he says what? While the evil days come not, because when the evil days come and the years of your age draw nigh, you're going to say, you have no pleasure in remembering your, your creator. He says, do it while you're still young. Jump down to verse 8 now again. Verse 8. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher, all is vanity. Meaning all is garbage. Read. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. The preacher was wise because his wisdom still remained with him. He's recovering himself now. Go ahead. He still taught the people knowledge. You see what he did? He recovered himself and he taught the people God's laws. Go ahead. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. You see what he says here? He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. So now he was going deep into the wisdom of the Most High God and bringing out wisdom now this day. All oh, praises to the Most High. Go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Mm -hmm. And that which was written was upright. The Even thing that was written, meaning the laws of God, the commandments of the Most High God, they were upright. The things that was written, read. Even words of truth. The commandments of God, read. The words of the wise are as gold. Mm -hmm. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Read. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from one shepherd, the most like God. God's God, the, the, which are given from one shepherd, guess what? That one shepherd right there is talking about what? He's talking about Christ. You understand? He's talking about who? He's talking about the prophets also. But the, that one shepherd is talking about Christ. Understand that? Read that part again. He says, the words of the wise are as what? The words of the wise are as gold and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. So when he says the words of the wise are as gold and as nails, Fastened by masters of assemblies is letting you know that the word of God is undefeated. God's laws is undefeated. Okay, understand that. Read. Which are given from one shepherd. That's the black Messiah. Come on. And further, by these, my son, mm -hmm. be admonished. Be warned. Now, now, mm, man, this is some heavy stuff. You see that verse 11 right there? Keep going. Read verse 12 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 12. Read. And further, by these, my son, be mm -hmm. admonished. Of making oh. many books, there is no end. Of making many books, books about God, books about, you know, witchcraft and all of that. Because he went through all of that stuff. He says, be admonished, be, he says, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end of all these other books. Read. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. And much study of these other books outside of the Bible is a weariness of the flesh. It's going to wear you out. Read. 
Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now he's letting you know, listen, of all these things that I've experienced, all the evils that I've done, let me show you the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole point that you are here on this earth. Read. Fear God. Mm -hmm. And keep his commandments. Come on. For this is the whole duty of man. You see that thing? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Now listen, the preacher is wise now. The preacher is experienced. The preacher can tell you, don't touch that. Don't do this. Don't stay away from that. Stay, listen, don't do X, Y, and Z. Because why? He understands. He has experience. He's, he lived through that. He knows what that means. What it does to the mind, to the soul. He, he knows all that. That's why he's saying what he's saying. Read again verse 13. There's some heavy stuff here, man. Come on. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. We are God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For this is the whole duty of man. Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Mm -hmm. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see that thing? Because the Lord is going to bring everything into judgment when, they, when he returns. You understand? Now, what I, what, I went, what I wanted to show you is, guess what? Even the wisest of the King Solomon was the wisest man on earth. Guess what? He also, he had a vice, but he recovered himself. You understand? So don't think that you cannot recover from anything that you're going through. You can recover. You can overcome it. That's why it's written in this book for us to learn. Understand that for both men and women, Everybody has a vice that they are dealing with. Everybody has a thorn in their flesh. Get that in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Everybody has something that they are dealing with. You understand? Second book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 7. Go ahead. And lest I should be exalted above measure through mm -hmm. the abundance of the revelations. Read. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. You see that? The apostle Paul says there was given unto him a thorn in the flesh, meaning that sin that is difficult to get rid of, that you you on every day you battling with the thing, every day you fighting with it. You, 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 listen, all the other ones you can deal with them, but this there's this one sin. Listen, when you've been long enough in this truth, you're gonna discover it. You're gonna discover this is the one thing that I struggle with above everything else. You understand? You everybody knows themselves. You all you know that. This one right here, this is my, this is the thorn in my flesh. And I need to overcome because if you overcome that, you're going to get the kingdom. That thing right there, that thorn right there is the thorn, is the sin that is standing between you and the kingdom. Understand that. So our job, each and every one of us, is to examine it, to know it, to find it out, and to begin to work on it to overcome. Understand that. Read that again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 7. Read. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Mm -hmm. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Read. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. You see that thing? The messenger of Satan. Because Satan has messengers. Satan uses people, you understand? People around you, people you know, people in the world, people at work, people at the mall, wherever you travel. Satan has messengers to do what? To buffet you. If your sin is fornication, Satan is going to use somebody that is going to play that before you. If the sin is lust and all that, guess what? Satan will use a messenger to buffet you. Why? Because guess what? That's going to be your thorn in your flesh. Your job is to do whatever is necessary lawfully to overcome it, to stay away from it. Read. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Go ahead. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Mm -hmm. That it might depart from me. So now he begged the Lord three times that the Lord must take away this thing from him. Three times, but the Lord said no. Go ahead. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. What is grace? Grace is the chance for us to get our minds right. He says, my grace is sufficient. You have grace for you to get it together. Get it right in the grace period of giving you. Go ahead. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Read. Really? Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities mm -hmm. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see that thing? 
He says, I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He's saying what we must put on our Lord, uh, put on, we must put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We must put on the armor of light. That's what he's saying right there. You can read that in Romans chapter 13. Now, watch this. Give me 2 Samuel now, chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 1. Watch this. The things that are written are for time. Okay. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, mm -hmm. that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. Read. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So now when it was time for them to go to war, King David remained in Jerusalem, right? So while he was at Jerusalem, here's what happens now. Go ahead. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. So now King David is walking upon his roof. He's walking upon his rooftop. Okay, go ahead. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. So now, because listen, what we're reading here, he says, from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. So that's letting you know we had pools on top of our roofs. You see, when you look at these, uh, these mansions, these white people that have these big houses and mansions, they've got a pool on top of the house. It opens and closes. They get it from here. You understand? Go ahead. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Mm. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So now, after David saw the woman, guess what happened? What jumped on her for for the King David? Last. Get that in Matthew chapter 5. Let me show you what happened to our forefather, King David. You understand? Because we need to understand the mindset of, because King David was chosen by the Lord, right? Watch this. Ma give me Matthew 5, verse 27. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27. Go ahead. Ye have heard that it was said by them of all time, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. But I say unto you, mm -hmm. whoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already with her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So now what has happened? King David, he looked, she, he looked at Bathsheba. She, he looked and lusted after Bathsheba. You understand? And what happened next? He acted on the lust that he had, that, that he, he, the lust that he had on the woman. Watch this. Go back to 2 Samuel chapter 11. Read verse 3 now. 2 book of Samuel chapter 11 verse 3. Go ahead. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So now this is a married woman. You understand? Bathsheba, she's a wife to Uriah. So now David lusted after the woman. Now she, he wants to inquire about the woman. Who's this woman? Okay, go ahead. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him. And he lay with her. You see what, you see what happened? He had sex with the Bathsheba now. He, last, he looked, he lusted, he acted upon that lust. He slept with Bathsheba. Go ahead. For she was purified from her uncleanness. She was purified from her uncleanness. She was not in a menstrual. That's why she was washing herself and all that, because she was done with her menstruals and all that. She, she was purified. Go ahead. And she returned unto her house. So she returned to her husband's house. Watch this. Read. And the woman conceived. She, she fell pregnant. And sent and told David. Mm -hmm. I am a child. So now she's like, listen, I'm pregnant. You understand? You the peppy. You the peppy. Okay. Now, keep going. 
And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Go ahead. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. You see, now he's finding out, okay, listen, what happened at the war? How did it go? And he says, Uriah came, and David demanded of him um, how Joab did. He asking Uriah now, how did Joab did out there? He says, how the people did and how they prospered, right? Go ahead. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. Mm -hmm. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So now we listen. He said, listen, I'm also giving you a gift and all that. Go back to your house and enjoy yourself with your wife. Go ahead. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord. Meaning the men of war, because Uriah was what? Uriah was a faithful brother. He was loyal to the king. Go ahead. And went not down to his house. Mm -hmm. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Mm -hmm. Why then didst thou not go down into thine house? He says, Why didn't you go to your house? Because what was David doing? King David now is realizing, listen, this woman is pregnant. So I have to now, he's now, he now you see what he's doing? He looked, he lusted, he acted upon the lust. Now the woman is pregnant. Now what happened is that he's thinking, hmm, I need to find a way of getting this man, the husband, to sleep with his wife so that I can make him believe that the baby is his and not mine. You see what he's doing now? He's escalating the situation. Read. Really? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Mm -hmm. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. So he says, listen, the, I'm, come, I'm come from war and the men of war are out there. I'm going to sit with the men of war. I'm going to sleep with them out there. Go ahead. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also. And tomorrow I will let thee depart. Go ahead. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. So now David is thinking, mm, okay, you can remain here and to, to, today and tomorrow in Jerusalem, okay? And then you can depart on the morrow. Watch this. Read. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. Now he's drinking. He's drinking and he's eating. What is David doing? First, he tried to get a man to go to his house and to sleep with his wife so that when the baby is born, when the sheep, the, the stomach starts to show, they can say, okay, that's Uriah's, that's Uriah's baby. That didn't work. Now he's like, okay, I'm going to get him drunk. Go ahead. And he made him drink, and at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants mm -hmm. of the Lord, but went not down to his house. So he, when he got drunk, he didn't go to his, he did not go to his house. He said, okay, I'm going to sleep with the servants of the Lord. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning that David mm -hmm. wrote, a wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Now, you see, right there, you see verse 14? This was heavy for me. You brothers that have been doing the fourth chapters, listen, is read verse 14 again. I'm going to show you how heavy this thing is. You see here, David completed the devil was on him on this wise. Go ahead, read that again. Second book of Samuel chapter 11 verse 14. Read. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So now King David wrote a letter and he's sending it to Joab and he's, he's using... Uriah to relay the message. Uriah, take this letter and give it to Joab. Watch this. Go ahead. And he wrote in the letter, saying, mm -hmm. Set you Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. Now, this is some evil stuff, man. You see what's going on? Now, imagine. Uriah is, is delivering the letter to Joab. Now, Joab opens the letter right there in front of Uriah. 
He's reading it, but Uriah don't see what's in the letter. And Joab is looking at it, wait a minute. This letter pillar, it says, I must say Jew in the hottest, in the, in the, in the hottest, what? He says, I must set you in the forefront of the hottest battle that you may be put to death. Joab's looking at this, he's looking at Uriah. Uriah is not understanding what was going on. You see the point? Read, read that again, verse 15. Second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 15. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, mm -hmm. and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Now this is some evil stuff, man. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city... That now they are going to war. Now they are going to war. Now Joab is observing the city because he's the captain. Go ahead. Then he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. But one thing I want you to understand also is that Joab was a demon. Joab, Joab was a demon. I tell you right now, Joab was a demon. You understand? Because think about it. That's a story for that's a topic for another day. But what you want to notice here is that Joab, he wanted to have something on King David. Do you see that? He wanted to have something on King David. That's why when you keep reading, you see the way you, the way Job was disrespecting King David because what? There's something he knew about King David. You see the point? Yes, sir. Mm. Listen, when the Most High God has given us the spirit to repent, me, I will never allow nobody to hold nothing against me. Oh, hell no. And that's the spirit you all must have. Read the thing again, verse 16 now. Second, because Samuel chapter 11, verse 16. Read. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. Go ahead. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. Mm. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Because that's what King David wanted. Go ahead. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. Read. And charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matter of of telling the matters of the war unto the king. Read. And if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Mm -hmm. Knew ye not? that they would shoot from the wall. He says, didn't you know that they're going to shoot from the wall? The enemies will shoot from the wall. When you come closer to the wall, you understand, you're exposing yourself, right? Who smote Abimelech, the son of, of Jerub, Jerubusheth? Come on. Did not a woman cast a piece of a milestone upon him from the wall? Mm-hmm. That he died in, in Tabez. Why went ye nigh the wall? Mm -hmm. Why did you go next to the wall? Come on. Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. He says, then tell him that, listen, your servant Uriah is dead also. Go ahead. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. Mm -hmm. Read. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field. And we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. Come on. And the shooters, and the shooters shot from off the wall upon thy servants. And some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Come on. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Hmm. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. But Joab knew, Joab knew why. Uh, Joab, Joab, he understood that Uriah, we're gonna get, we need to get Uriah killed. But this servant right here, he didn't understand all that. But what's happening is that here, now they're making it seem like, listen, next time you must position yourselves better. Go ahead. That's what King David is saying. Go ahead. 
And when the wife Uriah, and, and the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. He mourned for her husband, Ray. And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her to his house. Hmm. And she became his wife. Stop right there. Read that again, verse 27. Second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife. And bare him a son. Read. Really? But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So now what's happening is here is, listen, he tried to get a man, he tried to get a man to go to his wife to his house to sleep with his wife so that he can make it seem like the, the child is yours. That didn't work. He tried to get a man drunk. That didn't work. And say, listen what? We need to get him killed in the hottest battle. And that worked. Now, guess what? As soon as Bathsheba mourned for her husband, David took the woman and she became David's wife. Now, the Lord was not happy about this thing. The next chapter, the first verse. Watch this. Now, what we just read, this is some evil, what David had done. All because of what? Look and lust and acting upon the lust. You see the domino effect? I want you men and women to see this thing. Don't just leave it back then with King David. Understand whatever ill, whatever thorn that is in your flesh, this is the effect that it can do. You understand that? You men understand that? Yes, sir. This yes, sir. Is the impact that it can make. You understand? So it's not just for the men. It's for both men and women. But I'm dealing with the men now being defiled by women. Meaning, do not de be, get defiled by women. We must learn from these accounts. Okay, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Second book of Samuel, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Mm -hmm. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. So now the Lord is putting the Lord put the spirit upon King upon Nathan the prophet to go and speak to David. Now there's a similitude that there's an illustrated story that is being that is being told to the king. Now the king is listening. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. The rich man was well, he listen, he had many flocks and herds, so he was wealthy, right? But the poor man had nothing. Mm -hmm. Save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought, which he had bought and nourished up, mm -hmm. and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. You see that thing, and the ewe lamb was unto him as a daughter. Go ahead, watch this. Listen, this is a heavy parable, but let's deal with the surface. What happened with? Um, David, King David and Bathsheba. Go ahead. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. Mm -hmm. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So now he says the traveler came unto the rich man. The rich man, instead of using his own flock, he took that ewe lamb of the poor man and used it for the travel and dressed it and gave it to him. Read. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Mm -hmm. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. Now, read that again. Read verse 5. Read verse 5 again. Okay, come on. Second book. Go Samuel chapter 12, verse 5. Read. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Read. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. So King David was mad as hell. He says, The man that done this, he's got, he must be put to death. Go ahead, watch this. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Mm -hmm. That's according yes. to Deuteronomy, right? That's according to Exodus, I think. Exodus, Exodus. Let me think, let me think. Yeah, Exodus, uh, Exodus 22. Yeah, Exodus 22. You can read about, you can read about that on your own. Read. Because he did this thing and mm -hmm. because he had no pity. That part right there. He says, because he did this thing, he took that ewe lamb of that, the, the, the poor man, 
and gave it to the traveler instead of using his own flocks. You understand? He says, listen, he must be put to death. He must return fourfold unto the man. And he guess what? Because he had no pity, he had no mercy. Go ahead, watch this. Then Nathan said to David, said to David mm -hmm. thou art the man. Stop right there. Read that again. Second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 7. Mm. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Now, this is some heavy stuff, brothers. Me, when I read this, I'm like, whoa. Mm. This is heavy stuff, man. When you read this stuff, listen, you must get some chills when you read this stuff. It says, Nathan said unto David, thou are you the man. You the man that must be put to death. You the man that had no mercy. You see that thing? Now, this is a deep, is a much deeper parable, but let's just deal with the surface. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anoint, I anointed the king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Now the Lord is reminding Dave, King David what he did for him. That's why whenever you read, when you read the scriptures, the most High God is always reminding us what he did for us when he delivered us out of the hand of Egypt, out of the hand of Pharaoh. Why? Because we tend to forget. We tend to be ungrateful. Okay, go ahead. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom. Read. Really? And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Meaning all 12 tribes was under you, King David. Go ahead. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Meaning whatever you would have wanted, I was going to give you more. We really? Come on. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? You see that thing? It says, why then did you despise the commandment of the Lord? What command of the Lord? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't look and lust. You understand? Love your neighbor as yourself. Go ahead. To do evil in sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You see what he's telling King David? He didn't say you got Uriah killed. He says, no, you did it. You killed Uriah with the sword. Although you send men to do it, but you are the one that did it, King David. You're the one that did it. Read. And has taken his wife to be thy wife. And you've taken his wife to be your wife. Go ahead. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, you even got, you, you killed, you took a sword of the enemy and killed your brother with it. Your, your brother, that's what the Lord is telling King David through the prophet Nathan here. Go ahead. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, the sword will not depart from your house, King David. You understand? Because you look at Absalom, what Absalom did. Absalom plotted against his father to overthrow him. He slept with all his concubines on top of his roof all when all Israel was watching. You understand? Read. And he killed the firstborn of Bathsheba. Read. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, Ray. I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. You see that? That goes into Absalom. That goes Absalom. What's the other one? Mm, in 2 Samuel 13, Absalom and you've got Absalom, that's Absalom and Amnon. Yeah. Absalom and Amnon, they were demons. Go ahead. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes mm. and will give them unto thy neighbor. That's Absalom, read. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of, his, of this son. On the sight of this son, meaning on top of the roof. Because when you read on, that's exactly what Amnon did. Read on. For thou didst it secretly. Mm hmm but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. This is some heavy stuff, brothers. This is some heavy stuff. Whatever sin that you're in, whatever, th listen, make sure you, you keep it 100 with the most high and take full responsibility of it. Don't sugarcoat it. Make sure to deal with that stuff. Go ahead. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Mm-hmm. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. 
He says, the Lord, the Lord is, Nathan is telling David, he says, listen, the, you, yes, you have sinned, because King David is confessing, he says, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Meaning the Lord is going to have mercy upon you. You understand? Why is that? Give me that book of Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Watch this. Acts 13, verse 22. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Go ahead. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Mm -hmm. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, Read. a man after mine own heart, mm -hmm. which shall fulfill all my will. You see what he's saying about King David? He says, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Because King David, he loved the Lord. You understand? The, Lord, the, the, the type of love that the Lord had towards King David, listen, it was the special kind of love. The most are his favorites. Don't get it twisted. He does. So, but listen, don't be doing evil and say, but the Lord forgave King David. No, 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 no. Don't think of the love, the same the type of love that the Lord had for King David, he might not necessarily have for you. So don't think of, don't, let's, don't be simple. Don't simp. Don't be dumb. You understand? We must keep the commandments of the Lord. Whatever thorn that is in our flesh, you have to fight, brothers. You have to fight. There's no, giving up is not an option. You got to fight because this is a battle. Understand that. Now, watch this. So did King David recover? Yes, he did recover. Watch this. Give me Psalm 51. Psalms chapter 51, okay? Because the sin that he was in, this was the sin that he was in, right? Let's go to Sirach 9. Okay, let's just deal, deal with it just, for just, just a little bit. Sirach chapter 9, read verse 2. Okay? Because what he did was he gazed upon, upon Bathsheba. Okay? Watch this. Read Sirach 9. Read verse 5. Sirach 9 verse 5. Read there. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Because that's what happened to King David. He gazed upon Bathsheba and he fell for those things that were precious in her because she was bathing. He saw everything. Okay? Read on. Give not thy soul unto harlots mm -hmm. that thou not lose thine inheritance. That thou lose not thine inheritance. You know what? Jump down to verse... Read verse 7. Read 5 and 7 together. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. There is not on a maid that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Read. Verse 7. Look not round about thee in the streets of the city. Mm -hmm. Neither wonder thou in the solitary places thereof. Because he was walking upon the roof and he saw a woman bathing. Bathsheba. Go ahead. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. You see that? That's what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to, when he saw that, he was supposed to just turn away and move back and, and turn around and go back to where he was. But he did not. Go ahead. And look not upon another's, another, he, another's beauty. Another woman's beauty, meaning another man's beautiful woman. That, that's Bathsheba, Uriah's wife in this instance. Go ahead. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. That's what happened to our forefather, King David. Come on. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. You see that thing? That thing was kindled. You understand? They committed adultery. Go ahead. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Because that's what he did. That's why they committed adultery. Go ahead. Nor sit down with her in thine arms. Mm -hmm. And spend not thy money with her at the, at the wine. Okay, read. Lest thine heart incline unto her. You see that thing? Lest your heart incline unto her. Because that's what happened to King David. His heart was inclined unto Bathsheba. Go ahead. And so through thy desire, thou, thou fall into destruction. Because that's exactly what happened. What was the destruction? Absalom, he plotted for 40 years to overthrow his father. You understand? So David was just surrounded by enemies at that point. Why? Because of what he did. Now watch this. Now, did he recover himself? Of course he did. Now give me that in uh, Psalm 51. Okay? Psalm chapter 51 verse 1. This is King David praying to the Mosai. I want you to read quicker. Okay, come on. 
the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1. Uh-huh. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Really? According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot mm. out thy transgressions. So now King David is praying to the Lord, he's begging the Most High God to do what? To forgive him of what he did. Read. Really? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity mm-hmm. and cleanse me from my sin. That's the prayer we all must have when we find ourselves in messy situations. We must beg for mercy from the Lord. Read. Really? For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin. What? For I acknowledge my transgressions. That's what we read in 2 Samuel chapter 12. He said, I have sinned. I've, 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 I've sinned this day when he was talking to, to Nathan. Read. And my sin is ever before me. My sin is before me because Nathan was, was like, you the man that did this. Read. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. Mm-hmm. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Because why? He acknowledges sin. He said, listen, Lord, I did evil. Forgive me. Help me to overcome this thing. You understand? But the Lord still judged King David through his what? Through his son, through his concubines, his wives, and all that. He was on the run and all that. Why? Because what? The most High God, yes, he will give you mercy. He will forgive you, but the Lord's still going to judge you. But the prayer that we must pray is that when the Lord is judging us, he must judge us according to his mercy. That's what we pray for. Read. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, mm-hmm. and in sin did my mother conceive me. Read. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Though, see, when we pray, we must keep it real with the Lord. We must not be faking the funk. Go ahead. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Mm. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hyssop is a clean, is a cleansing solution. Jump down to verse 10. Come on. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That right spirit is the Holy Spirit. He's asking the Lord to renew, to put the spirit upon him again. To be the mighty prophet he was. Go ahead. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. You see what he's saying? He says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He's begging the Lord. That's the prayer we all must pray. He says, cast me not away from thy presence, Lord. And take not, he says what? And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In the spirit of understanding. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Pray. And- and uphold me with thy free spirit. Come on. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Uh-huh. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Because meaning what? He's going to teach the commandments of the Lord to bring Israel back unto the Lord. He's going to be that a good example to the nation. Read. Deliver me from, from blood guiltiness. O God, thou God of my mm-hmm. salvation, my tongue shall sing aloud of Read. thy righteousness. Oh, you see Lord. what he's saying? He's begging the Lord this day. He's begging the Most High God. We, have must, we must have the same spirit when we come before the Father. Go ahead. Oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Pray. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Mm-hmm. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. You see, the one thing that was heavy that King David understood about the second coming of the Lord when the law of animal sacrifice is going to be done away with. He understood that. Read. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. That's what the Lord is looking for. The sacrifices of the Lord are a broken spirit. We must show a contrite spirit. We must show our remorse and we are that we are sorry. And we must sorrow to repent, not to go back to into our sin. Read. A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. The Lord will not despise that. Come on. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Mm -hmm. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Pray. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. You see that thing? Then the Lord will be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, which is keeping the commandments of the Lord without the law. Pray. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. You see, King David, he recovered himself. He did that thing. He recovered himself. 
Now, watch this. I need you to pay close attention now. Watch this. Give me 2 Samuel chapter 7. You understand? Because there's something I didn't touch on. You understand? I didn't touch on that. Watch this. Give me, actually, you know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16. Read that for me. You know what? Hmm. Oof. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. Go ahead. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. The thing that has been in the past is that which shall be in the future. Go ahead. And that which is done is that which shall be done. The thing that is done in that was done in the past in the, in the in the days of old is the thing that will be done in the future or in the present that we in. Go ahead. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new thing under the sun. Let's understand what is the thing. Get that in Ecclesiastes chapter six verse ten. Let's see what is the thing. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter six verse ten. Go ahead. That which has been is named already. That which has been is named already. Go ahead. And it is known that it is man. It is known that it is man. So the thing that we read in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 is the spirit of man on this earth. You understand? Go ahead. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. That is mightier than him that's the most like God. Now, go back to Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. One more again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. Come on. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. Mm -hmm. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Go ahead. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new thing under the sun. Let's talk about the spirit of man. The spirit of man. They keep coming back over and over. You understand? Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible calls it regeneration. The spirits, they never disappear. When you die, you go back to the Father. The Lord brings you back. In the new life, they in the you know, in a new timeline. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 16. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16. Read. There is no end of all the people. You see that thing? There is no end of all the people out there. The people is talking about the thing. Go ahead. Even of all that have been before them. Read. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Read. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of the spirit. So what is King Solomon telling us? King Solomon is telling us there is no end of all the people, meaning what? The spirit keeps coming back over and over upon this earth. If you were a prophet back then, you're going to come back as a prophet. If you were evil back then, you're going to come back that evil. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, read verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. She preserved the first from father of the world. Mm -hmm. And was created alone and brought him out of his fall. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. She preserved the first from father of the world. Mm -hmm. And was created alone. That's and Adam. That's Adam. The first from father of the world that was created alone. That's our forefather, Adam. Go ahead. And brought him out of his fall. And Adam was brought out of his fall. Give me that in Genesis 3 verse 21. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Go ahead. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. This is after Adam and Eve has sinned. What did the Lord do? Read that again verse 21. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Read. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. So that's how Adam was brought out of his fall. What did the Lord do? This is when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. You understand? After Adam and Eve had sinned, is that the Lord made coats of skins and clothed them. The coat of skins is the skins of the animal from the animals that were slaughtered because of the law of animal sacrifice that was introduced after they had sinned for them to receive atonement. 
That's why it says that way he was brought out of his fall. The proof of that is in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 2. Read. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So now Adam and Eve, they've got kids. The proof of the animal sacrifice that was that was introduced in Genesis 3.21, the proof of that is in Genesis, the fourth chapter, with the children, Adam, with the children of Adam and Eve, which is Cain and Abel at this point. Okay? You understand? So the, the, the parents, they taught their children how to atone for their sins. Adam was a, Adam, Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a till, till of the ground. He was a farmer. Go ahead. And in process of time, it came to pass mm -hmm. that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now, what happening, what's happening here is our forefather Abel brought an offering of what? Read verse 4 again. The book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now our forefather Abel, he brought forth the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Because at this point, our forefather Abel, he for he for atonement for of his sins, he brought an animal because the law of animal sacrifice, this was introduced to the parents for them to atone for their sins that was committed by our foremother Eve. You understand? So the law of animal sacrifice was introduced here. So go back to Genesis 3 verse 21. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Read. Right. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. He made coats of skins and clothed them. So the coats of skin is the, the skins of the animal. The proof of that again, so you don't, you don't forget, is that our forefather Abel, he, he brought an offering of the firstlings of his flock and the fed thereof. All this, give me that in Numbers 18 verse 17, just to prove that, okay? The book of Numbers, chapter 18 verse 17. Read. Right. But the firstling of a cow, uh -huh. or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire. Mm -hmm. Eat savor unto the Lord. That's what our forefather Abel did. Our forefather Abel, guess what he did? He brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thou of that must be bent upon the altar as an, as an offering made by fire for sweet savor unto the Lord. So that's how we know is the law, of, the law of animal sacrifice was introduced to Adam and Eve for them to atone for their sins. Get that in Psalms 132 verse 9. When it says, let they, let what? When it says, and unto Adam also and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. Read that, Psalms 132 verse 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 132, verse 9. Go ahead. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Mm -hmm. And let thy saints shout for joy. You see what he's saying? Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. So the righteousness that Adam and Eve was clothed with was what? Was the blood of the animals that they had to spill for the atonement of their sins. That's when Adam was brought out of his fall. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 2 again. Now, verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. She preserved the first form father of the world that mm -hmm. was created alone and brought him out of his fall. So Adam was given a way to recover. Adam and Eve, they were given a way to recover. How? By when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. You understand? Which was the shadow of things to come. Get that in, get, get Revelations now, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, read verse 11. The book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. 
the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book. So now, who's speaking here? This is Jesus the Christ. What did you say? Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book. You know what? Read verse 8. Read verse 8. Let's read that. Okay, I think I want that one. Read verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the, the Lord. What? Hold on, read that again. It says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the what? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning mm -hmm. and the ending. He says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. I need you men and women to pay attention here. You understand? The class is up, up about to throw a curveball now. Watch this. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. I'm Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the ending. Say to the Lord, which Say is... What? Say to the Lord. So this is Christ speaking. Come on. Which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, give me 1 Corinthians 15 now. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The first man, the first man, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Go ahead. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Read that again, verse 45. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. Read. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The first man, the first man Adam was what? The first man Adam was made a living soul. Read. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now that's some heavy stuff. We just read in Revelation 1 verse 8, it says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was, which is, is to come. Right? The first man, Adam, okay, was made a living soul. That's Genesis 2 verse 7. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Give me that in 2 Ezra 3 verse 21 now. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3 verse 21. Read. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed. You see that? The first Adam. The first Adam. Go ahead. And was overcome. Mm -hmm. And so be all they that are born of him. Now go back to Luke 3 verse 37. Let's see who is this first Adam and the last Adam. Watch this. Luke 3 37. The book of Luke chapter 3 verse 37. Go ahead. Which was the son of Methuselah. Now this is the lineage of Adam's line. Okay. This is the seed line that comes out of Adam. Read. Right? Which was the son of Enoch. Mm -hmm. Which was the son of Jared. Which was the son of Malalil. Which was the son of Canaan. Right. Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of God. So Adam was the son of God. That's some heavy stuff right there. Get that in Matthew 11 verse 19. Watch this. Pay close attention. Okay. You catch it, you catch it. You don't, you blow. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 19. Go ahead. The son of man came eating and drinking. So now who's speaking here? This is Christ speaking about himself. Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking. The son of man. Who's the son of man? Christ. The son of man is Christ. Get that in Matthew 16, verse 13 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I, the Son of Man, am. I, the Son of Man, am. He's the Son of God, of course. 
He's the son of God, but he's telling you he's the son of a man. Watch this. Give me that in third John. You understand? Give me second John, second John, verse three. Watch this. Second book of John, verse three. Mm -hmm. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. The Son in of whom... the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, meaning the Son of God. Go ahead. The Son of the Father in truth and love. Now give me Revelation 2 verse 18 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 verse 18. Come on. And unto the angel of the church in Titeria, right? Uh -huh. These things said the Son of God. Stop right there. Read that part again. These things what? These things said the Son of God. These things said the Son of God. The Son of God. This is Christ speaking. Go ahead. Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire. Mm -hmm. And his feet are like fine brass. And his feet are like fine brass. Go back to Luke chapter 3. Read verse 38 now. Again. The book of Luke. Chapter 3, verse 38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So what is, the, what is Luke letting us know? Adam was the son of God. Now give me that in Revelation 1, verse 8 again, in case you missed it. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending. So the alpha means beginning, omega means the ending. Go ahead. Say the Lord, mm -hmm. which is and which was and which is to come, the almighty. The almighty. Now, watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. She preserved the first formed father of the world that was mm -hmm. created and brought him out of his fall. And brought him out of his fall. That's Adam. The first formed father of the world that was created alone and brought him out of his fall through what? Animal sacrifice. Right? Watch this. Now let's fast forward to see. Because guess what? The first man, Adam, the son of God, the Alpha, Guess what? He recovered. He learned. You understand? He learned from his mistake, from falling for the woman, from being defiled by a woman. Mm. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12. Watch this. Pay close attention. 2 book of Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. Go ahead. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. So now, and I will Nathan, hold on. Nathan is speaking to King David. What's going to happen to him, you understand, before he dies? He's prophesying here. Read that again, verse 12. Come on. Second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. Mm -hmm. So now, he said, hold on, he's telling King David, listen, I'm gonna, when you sleep with your fathers, meaning when you die, I'm going to set up your seed after you, King David, which will proceed out of your bowels, meaning out of your sperm. Read. And I will establish his kingdom. Mm-hmm. He shall build a house for my name. So now, at first glance, you may think he's talking about King Solomon. Because, yes, King Solomon, guess what he did? He established what? He built a house for the name of the Lord. When you read First Chronicles 29. Go ahead. And I, will, and I will establish the throne for his kingdom forever. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Was King Solomon's kingdom forever? No. How long was it? 40 years. King Solomon's kingdom was 40 years. It wasn't forever. 
You understand? So now, the Lord is talking about King Solomon, but he's also, but he's, def, he's actually going into Christ. You understand? I need you to pay attention here. He's prophesying. He says, I'm going to send, I'm going to set up what he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. King Solomon's kingdom was not forever. The next verse will clear it up. Go ahead. Who is talking about? Come on. I will be his father. And he I shall will be his son. father. I will be his father. Come on. And he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Go ahead. And with the stripes of the children of men. He says, and if he commit iniquity, what was Solomon's iniquity? He sinned. With all these multiple women, he went into idolatry, he did all sorts of things, but he did recover himself. That's what we read, right? He recovered himself. But here, watch this. King Solomon, was he punished for the things he did? No. He wasn't. King Solomon was not chastened with the rod of men. Neither were he what? Neither was he beaten with the neither was not neither with the stripes of the children of men. That did not happen to King Solomon. But that happened to Christ. Now, this is getting heavier here. Watch this. Now, go back to Ecclesiastes. I'm going to show you something. We read it earlier. I want you to men to pay attention. Sisters as well. Pay close attention. Okay, Ecclesiastes 12. I want you to read. Read verse 9. Then we're going to jump. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 9. Go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he mm -hmm. still taught the people knowledge. He did what? He still taught the people knowledge. He taught the people knowledge. So the preacher was wise. He taught the people knowledge. Go ahead. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. And he sought out and set in order many proverbs. Give me that in John 16, verse 25. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 25. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. These things, this is the Son of God speaking. He says, these things have I spoken to you in Proverbs. Go ahead. But the time cometh mm -hmm. when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Now go back. Ecclesiastes 12, read verse 10 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright. Go ahead. Read the words of truth. Read. Watch this. Remember, the preacher was wise. He set out. He said he sought out and set in order many proverbs. When you read the four gospels, is mainly just proverbs and parables. Hmm. Go ahead. The words of the wise are as gold. And there's nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Go ahead. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are what? Which are given from one shepherd. Watch this. Give me that in John 10. John 10 verse 11. Which are given from one shepherd. Hmm. Hold that. Give me Hosea 1 verse 11. First. Book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Read. And appoint themselves one head. They shall do what? And appoint themselves one head. They will appoint themselves one head. Judah and Israel, all 12, southern kingdom, northern kingdom, will be gathered together and will appoint themselves one head. Go ahead. And they shall come up out of the land. Uh -huh. For oh, great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now give me John 10. Read verse 11. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 11. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. Mm. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You see that? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. Read. And am known of mine. This is Christ speaking. Watch the next verse. Read verse 16 now. Come on. 
as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I laid down my life for the sheep. So remember, King Solomon did not lay down his life for the sheep. He didn't. You understand? He was in chastised with the stripes of the children of men. Go ahead. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Pray. Them also I must bring. Mm -hmm. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They shall be what? And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They shall be one fold and one shepherd. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, read verse 11 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 11. Go ahead. The words of the wise are as gold, and the nails fastened by the masters of, of assemblies. By the what? And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. The masters of assemblies. There's only one master of assemblies. Go ahead. Mm. <laughs> Which are given this from Bible, one ship. This Bible, man. This Bible. Listen, man. Read the part again. <laughs> Read verse 11 again. Let me calm down. Mm. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 11. Read. The words of the wise are as goats, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Go ahead. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from one shepherd. Who's speaking here? This is King Solomon speaking. King Solomon is speaking here, which are given from one shepherd. We just got through reading that there's only one shepherd in Israel. One. Who's there? Jesus the Christ. Go back to 2 Samuel 7. Verse 14. 2 Book of Samuel, chapter 7, verse 14. Go ahead. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Mm -hmm. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Right. And with the stripes of the children of men. You see that thing? So now King Nathan is telling King David, listen, your son which will proceed out of your own bowels, your sperm, guess what? He shall be my son, and if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. King Solomon didn't go through all this, but King Solomon did build the house of the Lord. You understand? But his kingdom wasn't forever. So all the evils that King Solomon did, he recovered from them. He repented, but he was never punished for them. Watch this. Now give me the book of 1 Peter 2.21. Watch this. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. You know what? Read verse 24. Read verse 24. Let's just get to the point. Start at read 21, then we're going to jump. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. For even here unto where you called, because Christ also suffered for us. Christ did what? Because Christ also suffered for us. Because Christ also, he suffered for us. Come on. Leaving us an example mm -hmm. that ye should follow his steps. We must leave, he left us as an example that we must follow his steps. Keep going. Who did no sin, mm -hmm. neither was guile found in his mouth. You see that thing? He says, he did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. He didn't break God's laws when he walked the earth. Hmm. Read verse 24. Watch this. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 24. Come on. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. On you see that? Go ahead. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. By whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were what? By whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. Guess what? Now, what did we just read? It says, whose tribes we were healed? Who did we just read about? Go back to 2 Samuel 7 verse 14, because I know some of you are not catching this. Let's see if you can catch it this time. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Read verse 12 again. 2 book of Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. Read. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels 
And I will establish his kingdom. And I will establish his kingdom. When we read verse 12, you may think he's talking about King Solomon. And he is talking about King Solomon here. But read the next verse. Go ahead. He shall build a house for my name. That's what King Solomon did. He built the house for the name of the Lord in 1 Chronicles 29. Read. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. King Solomon's kingdom was not forever. Letting you know, he's talking about King Solomon, but he's also he's going into Christ. The, 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 the last part of that verse when it says, his kingdom forever, that's going into Christ. Go ahead. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Hmm. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Go ahead. And with the stripes of the children of men. You see that thing? So he's talking about King Solomon, but guess what? King Solomon sinned, he recovered from his sin, but he got chastised for his sins when Christ came. So who was, who was King Solomon? King Solomon was Christ coming back on the earth. I need you men and women to understand that. Who was Adam? Adam was Christ. You understand? Did he recover from listening to the woman? Yes, he did in Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Did King Solomon recover? He did recover in, in what? In Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Did he got punished for his sins that he committed when he was dealing with all those strange wives? Yes, he did got punished. First Peter 2.24, read that again. First book of Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Go ahead. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. and whose stripes ye were healed. And whose stripes ye were healed. Remember, under King Solomon, what happened after Solomon died? The kingdom split. So there was a what? There was a, there was a problem in Israel. There was division in the nation. That means there was what? We didn't get along. So guess what? Who caused the division in Israel? King Solomon. Who had to, read, who had to bring the 12 tribes of Israel back together? King Solomon coming back as Christ. You see that thing? Need you men to understand that? Give me Matthew 27 verse 35. This is how King Solomon paid for what he did when he went with, the, with, with those strange women, those thousand women and all that, going into idolatry and all that. This is how he was punished. Matthew 27 verse 35. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 27 verse 35. Go ahead. And they crucified him. They did what? And they crucified him. That was the punishment, come on. And parted his garments. Mm -hmm. Casting lots. That it, might be, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Which was spoken by the prophet. Moses spoke about it. Isaiah spoke about it. Nathan spoke about it in 2 Samuel. Read. They parted my garments among them. Mm -hmm. And upon my vesture did they cast lots. And upon my vesture did they cast lots. That's what happened. You understand? So now watch this. Go back up in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter 2. Read verse 22. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter 2 verse 22. Go ahead. Who did no sin. Mm -hmm. Now there was guile found in his mouth. Now this is when Christ, when this is when Christ walked the earth. Coming back in the regeneration, right? This is how, guess what? When he came back in the regeneration, he did not sin, but he learned from his mistakes of not being defiled by women. Give me, give me Luke eleven twenty seven. 27. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as he Read. spake, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Now, listen, Christ was teaching. This woman comes. Now, guess what? She wants to speak. She's speaking to Christ regarding what? Worshipping his mother. Read that again, verse 27. Watch this. Pay close attention. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up a voice and said unto him, Blessed is the woman that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Now the woman is telling Christ, and listen, um, blessed is the womb that bear you, and the paps which thou hast sucked, meaning worship your mother. 
worship the woman. This is what Christ said. Watch how the son of man recovered. When he came back in the regeneration, when he walked the earth, he did not sin. He learned from all his mistakes. Really? But he said, yea, rather, uh -huh. blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. That's right. Read that again. Read that again. Some heavy stuff, man. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28. Pray. But he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Meaning what? There's no woman worship. I'm not going to get defiled by women. No more. He learned from his mistakes when he came back in the regeneration. You understand? He did not sin. He learned. Understand that. This is some heavy stuff, man. Give me that in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. Now, no, John 13, verse 15. I want to read that. John 13, verse 15. Read that. Book of John, chapter 13, verse 15. Pray. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. You see that thing? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. What did he do? He did no sin. Now, those of us that follow Christ after his footsteps, give me that in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you. He's talking to the disciples. He's talking to the disciples. He says, Verily I say unto you, come on. That ye which have followed me, in the regeneration. You see that thing? That ye which have followed me in the regeneration. From the time of the beginning. To the time of King Solomon. To the time when he returned upon this earth. When he walked the earth during the time of Rome. You understand? I'm just mentioning some of the times that he came. Go ahead. When the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory. When the Son of Man shall rule upon this earth with an iron fist, go ahead. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, mm -hmm. judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You see what he's saying? Christ is telling us, he said, listen, those of you that have followed me in the regeneration, you understand? When the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So that means... The regenerations, even his regeneration and ours, when you come in every regeneration, you're still going to follow Christ and keep the commandments. Every regeneration that the Lord brings you back, you're going to still be following the Lamb, the Lamb, wheresoever he goeth. Understand that. You understand? With every regeneration that you come back, you're going to be following the Lord, doing the exact same thing that you did in the previous regeneration that you came back. Now, Revelation 14, verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 1. Read. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. The hundred and forty-four thousand, that's what, that's what, that's the leaders of Israel. You understand? And among them is the 12 apostles that we read about in Matthew 19. Go ahead. And I heard a voice from heaven and the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. Mm -hmm. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Read that again, verse 2. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 2. Read. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Watch this. Go ahead. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne. They sang a new song before the throne. Go ahead. And before the four beasts mm -hmm. and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. You see that thing? The song is talking about what? The song that this is nobody else could learn the song. What is it talking about? 
breaking down the Bible precept upon precept, the parables and all that, understanding the breakdown of this book, 144 will understand that. Go ahead. In the regeneration, they'll come back, they'll still understand what this Bible is saying. Read. These are they which were not defiled with women. You see that thing? These are they which were not defiled with women. Because guess what? We just read that Christ wasn't defiled by a woman in, in Luke 11, 27 and 28. He learned. You understand? He learned when he walked the earth. Guess what? We're doing the same thing. We're following after his footsteps in the regeneration when we're coming back in this truth, returning back into this truth, remembering who we are, keeping God's commandments, following the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, read. For they are virgins. Mm -hmm. They are pure. Go ahead. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Hold that. Go back to where he was at in Matthew 19 verse 28. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which, which have followed me in the regeneration. Stop right, right there. That ye which have followed me in the regeneration. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. In every regeneration, they will still follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. No excuses whatsoever. That's what we're reading here. These are they which follow the Lamb with us wherever he goeth. Is it just talking about these last days? No. From the time of the beginning, they followed the Lamb with us wherever he went. Go back. Revelation 14, verse 4. I'm almost done. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. Read. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. For they are what? For they are virgins. They are pure, come on. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. You see that thing? We are the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. Guess what? The Son of Man learned his lesson through his regenerations. We also learning our lesson through the regeneration, through our regeneration. Doing the exact same thing, coming back into this truth, being the prophets of the Most High God, doing the word of the, applying the laws of God, no matter how hard it gets, we're still doing it. Why? Because we follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth when we come back in the regeneration. Understand that. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All oh, praise to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. Read what you got. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High.